to Mike Count the Show. It's 1025 The Bone. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 26, 2024, and we are coming alive this morning. How is everybody doing? Good. Woo-hoo. Carmen, how are you feeling today? Morning. Oh. Yes. Anybody pick up anything on that one? Oh. Carmen, can I ask one question? Sure. Is it just me you hate, or is it yes. the whole. Oh, oh my God. No, it's everybody. I'm oh. kidding. What? I don't hate any. I don't hate anybody. Yes. Uh, uh, I feel like you really do hate me. Uh. <laughs> oh no! I just can't. I mean, I know a bunch of reasons why. I just can't figure why now. Yeah, it didn't seem like you did anything yesterday. Like you, you know, there's other times where you're like, oh, I get it. You know, yeah. You know, said, sure. said this or I made a mistake, whatever happened. Forgot yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But yesterday it seemed out of, out of the blue. Was, was the was the opposite of what. You should have been mad at because you were like, I'm mad because right, I do that right. show. And we're like, oh, no, no. We would yeah, never do that never. to you. Uh, yeah, I figured that out after the fact. And there what do you mean? Were, after I even said something, that but, was not. It's been done not since that, Friday. Ask Spanish. Not figured out. Yeah, and, it's been done since Friday. Ask Spanish. And there was, okay, well, I was unaware of this. And then, but there was other work that I did handle. No problem. I do not mind helping out. It was just nice to know ahead of time. But there wasn't anything to tell you because it was already handled. No, but there was. Uh, Dizzy, did you put in overnights? You're welcome. Uh, don't I, bring I me did. this. Uh, <laughs> I did. But I'm just saying, I four, did. Four, four. <laughs> but I did. So you're welcome. It's not a problem. I don't mind helping. It's just nice. But well, how can you're not mad at Dizzy and you're mad at me and I didn't even do anything wrong? Because you're the one who didn't tell me. It's not Dizzy's responsibility to tell me. But it didn't affect you. But it did. I just told you how it did affect but, me. Well, it shouldn't affect. That was a mistake. Nobody was like, oh, Carmen will just put in the overnights. We just forgot. Or whoever. I don't even right. know what that means. I'm just saying I, somebody just forgot. I blame Dizzy on that one. Right. Sick. No. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It got handled. It's not the end of the world. I did it. No worries. Thank you, Carmen. I love you, Carmen. So you should be mad at the person that coordinated this, but didn't realize that if Dizzy was going to be here and you were there, that somebody needed to put in overnights. Who is that person? Who coordinated Dizzy being there? Dizzy and I did. Why do I keep getting brought in? Because you are involved in it. <laughs> you didn't forget to put in overnights. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Carmen. No, you're good. And and Why I'm, is he good? Because, again, it's not his responsibility to tell me. Whose responsibility Whosoever it was did not communicate. She's blaming on you, but she's mad at me. It's, well, it's my fault. You're the executive producer. You didn't talk to her. Well, as a Friday, you were. Yeah. Well, uh, you didn't tell her. Uh, I mean, I didn't know. I don't know what Dizzy's responsibilities are. Wow. Dizzy. Right. So you're saying it's Dizzy's fault? I mean, yeah, he knows what he does. All right. There you go, Dizzy. All right. I See guess later. it falls on me. Yeah. <laughs> again, I don't blame Dizzy for this. So, again, it's well, not. But it's, listen, and I'm not trying to blame Dizzy, but if if you do something every day and, uh, you know, then you're going to be somewhere else, you got to go, oh, hey, I'm supposed to do that. How is that going to get covered? You know what I mean? Right. I get that. And again, all it, all it took was on Friday when all this was getting figured out, like, hey, by the way, Dizzy's going to be here. So there might be some extra stuff. Just heads up. I was told- not, not coming in on Monday with the board in disarray from whoever is in here on the weekends. And then on top of that, just finding out all this extra stuff again, it's just not a fun way to start your Monday, I guess. And it just annoyed me and now it's over and it's done and everything got taken care of and no one died and we're good. But I would have to say that you probably owe Mike an apology. No, I mean, he really didn't have anything to do with any of that. I mean, did he, is he the one who wanted Dizzy over there? Is he the one that set that up? I asked Izzy if he wanted to sit in while Gio was on vacation. So you're the one who set that up? No, I asked. I Izzy mean, are you? Are you? You're the, this I, is your show. You asked someone to sit in on your show, so you are the one that set it up. I am unaware what anybody's duties are outside I'm, of this building. I'm very aware of that. Right. So <laughs> I don't. That's very clear. I don't know if if Dizzy coming here means he neglected one of his duties. How do I know that? You wouldn't, but you would know, but you are the one that orchestrated Dizzy being there. Nope. Puppet master. Spanish was. Yeah. I just asked if Dizzy wanted to sit in, and then Spanish orchestrated it by making sure that somebody was there to run the board mm-hmm. and do the whole thing and blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, Carmen. I should have asked Dizzy if he if we were missing anything from his daily routine. Okay. Again, <laughs> it's over. It was Monday. It's 
it's done. Everything was taken care of. No one died. We're Sounds good. like this is the last time I'm going to be here. <laughs> well, maybe if you cover all your jobs before you leave. Touche. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Interesting. Carmen, I appreciate you, and I am sorry. I love you. All good. Mm. Uh, what did you do yesterday? I saw Karen last night. Oh, why? Uh, on oh, purpose? Why? Yeah, on purpose. On Pornhub? Oh. Um, oh, oh, I, I didn't know. Not oh, on porn. Did she have oh, a baby okay. bump? No, 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 no baby bump. I saw her because I needed to forgive her face to face. Oh, oh my God. God. Well, let's go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nah, did you did. forgive her all over her face? No, 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 no. What I did, did not you do? forgive her all over her face. Nothing. We just sat and talked and, uh, you know, went over everything and I forget. I had to forget. I had to forgive her for me and it wasn't for her. It was for me. Is this I need to a, let it go. Uh, is this a, a book or somebody that you're following? Like their no. guidelines. This is no. just on your own. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know like uh, yeah, Alcoholics I, I know Anonymous, they go and they apologize right, to right, people they amends. wronged. Jay Morris said he had to text Bert. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't for that. I, I'm not. I'm not doing the the steps. Yeah. I didn't um, know whether there was something with your beads. No. 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 It wasn't. Wasn't. Wasn't with oh. the beads. No. It's just because uh, you Hold know out your muzzle. She caught. Yeah. She caused a lot of pain, and I don't want to hold on to it anymore. I want to let it so go. So tell me how that goes. You just just call her. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I was okay, like, I'll, hey, I'll be her. Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, Karen. Hey, uh, Hello, who is this? This is, uh, this is Anthony. Oh. <laughs> I'm here with my... What is this? That's music my, in the background. My drug dealing boyfriend. What can I do for you? Yeah, uh, I, I just want to have a conversation. Hey, up the phone. Shut up, Clarence. Clarence. Shut up, Clarence. I'm on the phone with Anthony. I just, uh, the boys are ready. <laughs> <laughs> the boys. Yeah. What? That's Thursday night. Uh, I just want to have a conversation with you because uh, everything is kind of settled down now and I still, I'm holding on to a lot of pain. So I just want to let it go. And, uh, Holding on to a lot of pain. Yeah, you know what right? you need? So many uh, things. Yeah. You know what you need? Honestly, you need to be punched in the face. Nah. Yeah. You've never been punched in the face. Uh, I have been punched. Not in without the face. a without a punching glove. Without a punching glove. <sighs> Boxing. So glove. okay, yeah. you call That's her. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> punching glove. My family's different. <laughs> so you uh, you you called her and you told her that. I mean, I didn't say it. I said uh, what I honestly said was, I, I just want to talk to you. Okay. I just want to talk to you face to face. Face to face. Yeah, face if to I was face. her, I'd be afraid you were just gonna be like stab, stab. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She did. She was afraid. She didn't know what she was getting into. Where did she go? Uh, we met at the Brandon Mall. At the what a weird spot. Yeah, mm. well, like in the food court. Uh, no, it was like outside and like you know, by Bahama Breeze out in the tables outside. Okay. And, and? Uh, yeah, we just talked and was it awkward in the beginning? Oh, absolutely. Was she have a, she have a right. baby bump? No baby bump. No uh, baby bump. Yeah, okay. we we awkwardly side hugged when we both showed up. Then we sat down. You know, she cried. She cried. She cried. Well, yeah. well, did you, you cry? already crying? No, I was. I did not cry. Wow. Wow. You didn't cry I don't believe that. On the way home, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. even worse. It wasn't like I was alone like, crying. Yeah, it was like a, it was a more like a like a sob. Like it was. I wasn't like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was more just like. You know when your eyes are open and a tear comes down? But no. It was just a couple. Oh, yeah. You I never have no had that? emotions. Yeah, me neither. Wait. Right, so you were like. <gasps> <gasps> no, I wasn't like. <gasps> no, no, no. I was just That's like. That's a song. Yeah. <laughs> what? What, was, what was that guy? How was that guy in intervention? <laughs> I was like that. Yeah. I... <laughs> so you, you sobbed on the way home. I, I wept. I web. It was more of a weep. Oh, oh my god! You know, it was more the of a weep. Weeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was well, good. Yeah, can you tell us about the conversation? Yeah, uh, yeah. We we went over those last uh, those last like three or four months of the did end of the year. Did she explain why she was incessantly yes. calling you? Yes, she oh, did. Yes, tell us. Yeah. Um, she just wasn't in a in the right state of mind because you know of her perhaps drug dealing boyfriend. Oh, okay. You All know right. what I mean. And what did she say about having a boyfriend the whole time she was almost engaged to you? She was very upset with herself. Is and she still she with blames this guy? herself. Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't ask. You didn't ask? I didn't ask. I didn't want to know. It's not my business. Oof. And he yeah. didn't try to call you again? No, no, he hasn't. I, I imagine he's probably incarcerated at this point. Good, because I'll punch that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Wait, which one? Yeah. Him, yeah. him, him, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, but it was uh, it was good. She like I said, she explained. She apologized. She took full responsibility for everything and apologized. And you know, I said, yeah. Did I, the words "I love you" come up at all? She did. She did say that. Oh, she did say that. You didn't say it I back. Did not. Strong way to yeah. say strong. Yeah, yeah. Joe, so where were you in the car the whole time? Hi. No, no, no. I was at home. <laughs> okay. Yeah, was yeah. He didn't even know I went. I told him I was going to the pier. He lied. Yeah, <sighs> I knew you would try to talk me out of it. You knew I would. Yeah. 
I had to do it. So now what do you now over. what do you think? Um, I not I mean nothing. That, that, that I'm just glad that chapter is finally closed. I is got it? what I needed. Oh, I absolutely. Feel like not, I feel like you opened the door yesterday. Nah, definitely not. You let not. the spirits back in. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it, it made me miss. You know, my heart belongs to somebody else, so it made Ooh. me miss. Oh. Who do you think? I don't know. Yes, you're you nuts. Do. I have nah, no idea. I'm not yeah. nuts. Not definitely not nuts. But thank you. You think you're telling me your heart belongs to? I'm, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say. I don't want to say it. I don't want to. You say fall in love. You don't fast. want me to say it. No, no, no. It's, I didn't say. I didn't say I was in love. Yeah, you can I say, it. say it. His heart belongs to Joe. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Your heart belongs to the new girl. You, the one that I was with. Yeah. I don't know. I'm so confused. I don't know. We just talked on. about her last week. Okay. Well, don't yell at me. I'm sorry. Right yeah, I, the one you're, you're confusing the, me. The one from Newport Ritchie, the Christmas break. <laughs> <laughs> that, can I you see why we might be confused? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. The the one I that I was, that was in an actual healthy relationship with. But you blow through him pretty quick. No, I messed up that one. Well, I messed up everything on uh last You messed up the first one. The second one rather. Yeah, Mariah. No, but what happened before that? The girl before that? Oh, I we stopped talking. I Hannah, like her. Mm. Hannah, yeah, yeah, no, that was, she's a barrel of fun. No, she's Dizzy. You bang her? Ooh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like Dizzy was sliding when nobody's looking. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get along great. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah okay, yeah. so you and uh, Mariah. Yeah. That's where your heart is. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But we don't talk, so. You don't talk? No, no. Well, you blew it. Yeah. But you, I thought you did talk. Yeah, I mean, she's doing her thing. So, she seems any... She seems like she's put together. <laughs> like yeah. she's got no time for BS. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't blame her. This would be a bad time to tell you I'm taking her on the cruise. No, nope. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> guess what, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I guess that's good. You got that out of the way. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was good. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I got it over with. Why do you think that doesn't happen in any of our lives? I have no idea. That we don't feel like we have to go apologize or talk to any of our exes or um, hear them. I don't know. Like it's just you. You you live this weird. No, I mean I've beware in life. Just a, it's just been a long year and a half. Just been I learned a lot about myself. It would make make it hard for me. All my exes live in Texas. Uh, <laughs> no. You're in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's weird because I don't think that um, I don't know. I always think I always think that my ex girlfriends, like ones that I dated, mm -hmm. hated me. But everybody else seems to like me. I'm kind of nice to everybody. Yeah. afterwards. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like we're still friends. Yeah. But well, I don't. I don't have to, I don't. And if they don't like me, I also don't care. Yeah. Well, you know, I've learned recently that uh, you know people are often like a reflection of parts stop, of you. Stop. Okay. Dude, I don't want to hear <laughs> anything about reflection <laughs> yeah, or yeah, looking right, in my fine. eyes or a soul. You can ask. These me are words you're not allowed to say on the show. Reflection. I'm definitely going to say them. No, you're not. You're I, not have to. Say, I have to say. You, you, you I'll can't kick stop you me. out. You yeah, I can 100 percent stop, stop you. Can do it. What? You want me to show you? Stop. You're never going to say it again. Say reflection now. Yeah. Exactly. No. No. Nothing. No reflection, no soul, right? No soul, no soul searching. Okay. No uh, inside. All right. You know. I'm sorry. You Astro such a, project. Such a uh, problem. I don't like us. that. I just, uh, problem with my journey. Did you I actually see Karen? Or did you, you astro over there? No, 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 no. I uh, I actually saw her face to face. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. You're just sitting in Joe's living room with the dog on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a dream last night. I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. I did win some money last night. On. Um, uh, basketball. I bet basketball all day. Luca, Luca. <laughs> well, I, 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 was, I bet the triple double. Uh, I was betting on the uh, the NCAA. So, uh, check your son. See if he bet the triple double with Luca because we had a little discussion on the oh, way really? out yesterday. Yeah, we were talking about uh, betting and different stuff. And uh, yeah, but the uh, the Celtics lost, which was wild because they were up at one point by like thirty some points. Yeah, and they locked it out. And then they wound up losing, which was unbelievable. But yeah, Luca from uh, from the Dallas Mavericks, who is a magician out on the court, yeah. got another triple double, and I bet on that, and I won four hundred and something. So. Yeah. Nice. God, Godwin's not going to work here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> One day his seat's going to be empty. He's like, sorry, guys. I don't need this job anymore. I am uh, up quite a bit for the last two weeks. Good for you. Yeah. Just in time for to get Cruise. on a floating casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is officially, what, nine days away? Nine mm -hmm. days. It's been nine days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I really am. I, I was thinking about it last night and started preparing and what do I need that I don't have and I was good. shopping yesterday on Amazon. What'd you buy? Well, I was getting stuff, you know, cruise wear and this and that. Cruise and wear? Yeah, yeah. What are you wearing? Yeah, some tank tops. I got some new shirts for dinner, you know. 
All kind of stuff. For, I, I'm asking. I'm not mocking. From Amazon. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't. Even, I don't think I ever bought clothes from Amazon. Yeah. Amazon has, like, if you want anything on there, like, I needed to get some new jeans. Uh, you I know. feel like they go to a clothes store, buy it, and then just ship it to you from Amazon. Sure. Yeah. That's, I mean, like, like I don't, I don't, I don't, also, want, I don't I, have to know how they do it. Right. And I'm not going to that store, paying for their shipping. Oh, no, no. It's, a great, it's great. Yeah, I just, yeah. I never thought of it. I never thought. But uh, also, you know, like uh, just tank tops and I needed some uh, swim trunks and whatever. So I just went through and looked and found stuff. You know, those don't, I, I, I don't really care designer stuff. If it right, looks right. good, it looks good. I, I always, every year I overpack. Sure. I bring a suitcase yeah. that Dizzy could fit in, <laughs> and then I bring another suitcase with shoes in it that I never wear. I don't understand. So this year I'm trying to go uh, in the daytime, sleeveless shirt, sleeveless shirt, sleeveless shirt. It's like I do it here every day. Yeah. And then uh, at nighttime, just uh, maybe like a button-down shirt and jeans every night. I literally could bring a duffel bag. Yeah. Yeah, because I'll, I'll like wear shoes, like uh, uh, running shoes onto the boat. I'll bring some, uh, you know, sliders, yeah, and then uh, dress shoes for dinner, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm ready. I also thought about this. Uh, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to go to dinner. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I, I you you I, were saying about doing the different restaurants? That's or what my wife and I did on the last cruise. We didn't go to the main dining room at all, and it was a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, not having to deal with people and not having to wait and not having that crowd to get in there. I'll uh, tell you, though, I do like dinner because everybody gets together at the, the end of the day and yeah, you discuss stuff, stories, and then yeah. you go out and do whatever you're doing. And, you know, I don't know. The first night that we're at dinner in Spanish, I was talking about feeling his insides. And stuff oh, and yeah. <laughs> well, he's not sitting him. at my table sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? I don't even remember who's at the tables. Uh, for me, it is me and my wife, Steve Byrne and his wife, my brother and his wife, and you get the adults table. John Brennan mm-hmm. and his wife. That's the adults nice. table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what do I have? The kids table? Yeah. yeah. Me, you, Joe, Dizzy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who else? Pete. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be crazy. <laughs> hey, boss, you want another roll? Um, yeah. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Tom's the best, man. You want some yeah. butter on that? <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why I didn't go to dinner, so I put a bunch of roast beef in my pocket. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude. 100% he would do that. He want pudding? Hold on, I got him on a bit. <laughs> Tom, you're limping. Is your knee hurt again? No, I got a bunch of roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> I figured Mike wanted some pizza I got in my back pocket. Oh, uh, yeah. I put some prosciutto in my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but when Bobby was here, but we got in the car, and um, uh, but we started driving. Bobby looks at me and goes, He's the best, isn't he? I go, he's the absolute yeah. best. He's the he's the nicest best <laughs> ever. Except he did, did I tell you what he did? I think yeah. I told you this already. I think you did, but I don't think the it was kids? on air, yeah. On air? I, I don't I, think it was on air. <laughs> <laughs> so so last Saturday, Tom came over to fix the sprinklers. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I love his kids. I tried to kidnap one. Right. <laughs> and I he comes over like at nine o'clock in the morning. I get up at five o'clock in the morning during the week. I like to sleep late on Saturdays. It's my only day. Okay, I'll take it out. Thank you. What was that? Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. I thought I had my mic off. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh. I heard she's going to take it out. <laughs> take it off. 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 What happened? Uh, we do not have traffic or weather oh, for the morning. Beep, beep. So I need to take them out. All okay. right. If you want, I could just tell you it's probably pretty heavy. <laughs> On the uh, Howard Franklin, the traffic's building up. Yeah, yeah it's going to get yeah, worse. It's right. Gonna, <laughs> it's going to get, get busier better. as time goes on. Yeah. Weather, it's pretty cool out now, but it's probably going to get yeah, kind of hot yeah. later. Just careful with the full moon out there. Hope that helps. Yeah. Is there That's a full moon? A, yeah. yeah. I didn't even notice. Yeah, didn't yeah. He, he didn't say it like five times? I only said it once. Mm. This is the second time. I, hear, I don't know whether he's, you know, I don't listen when he talks. Yeah, I don't, I don't play with <laughs> So anyway, so Saturday morning, I'm sleeping. In bed late. My daughter is sleeping with me. She still sleeping. Amanda gets up, walks the dogs, does her exercise and all that stuff. And Amanda comes in and wakes me up and she goes, You have to wake up. And I go, Why? And she's like, Tom is here. I go, I know he's fixing the sprinklers. And she goes, Yeah, but he just walked up to the house, opened the door, let the kids in, and went right back outside. <laughs> you gotta I, be kidding I go, me. What? And she goes, The kid just came running in the house. I'm sitting in the living room. They scared the hell out of me. And I go, okay, I, I don't even know what to do. So now I get up and I'm babysitting the kid. Did you grab your uh, pool skimmer? 
Uh, no, 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 I didn't no. hit the kids though. No, no I kind of, I kind of had to politely kick them out because I had uh, my wife had her friend here and they were still sleeping and they were running yeah. around screaming out. Oh, no, Come man. on, whatever you get all sense. the way, all the uh, way up, and you get all the way down. Common <laughs> sense. sense. It's, it's Tom, a roller coaster. It's common sense. Yeah, yeah. common <laughs> sense. It is wild, man. I've also put the kids inside and I oh, like them. At what point do you think that's a good idea? I'll just yeah. let the kids yeah. run free in this house. Yeah. <laughs> Super early in the morning. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, tax. no warning. Yeah, no. Yeah. Hey, do you mind? He'll love it. They'll stay out by the pool, <laughs> you know, or whatever. I don't know. I mean, that's probably dangerous. Yeah. But <laughs> Jesus. Then it came to me. I literally had to kick the kids out. I had to go. All right, uh, kids. I need you to go over here on the porch and hang out for a minute. Because I, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. They're out there. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's people sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's them play hide and seek. You guys hide outside. <laughs> 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 then they were like, well, "Do you have any toys?" I go, "I don't know. My kid's twelve. I don't have any toys. Uh, I don't know what you want it was, it was weird. We don't get toys at home. <laughs> <laughs> I love those kids. I just love them afternoon. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody uh, wants children as a surprise uh, first thing in the morning. I mean, my wife certainly didn't. I can tell yeah. you that. Oof. My wife is dealing with a lot of things right now. It's a lot. I don't know. I'll tell you that off the okay. air. Anyway. Um, Did she see Karen last night? Oh. She, uh, <laughs> she apologized uh, in Spanish. Uh, no. Uh, I, w- I was watching videos I'm, I'm in the algorithm of uh where people living in their car mm-hmm. cars because i like to watch some of that stuff oh are you out of the uh, fake baby breastfeeding algorithm <laughs> well that's on that's on instagram oh okay yeah. on youtube I'm, I'm actually at the point like the kids where i don't even turn the tv on i just watch youtube yeah and flip through the videos but there was a guy and he's like, like i like the guys who turn vans and stuff into campers and then they travel and i'm like that's a pretty good life you know a fun couple of years to be driving around the country, not have to have a job and just get by. And if they have clever ways of doing, like you swing this open and this and yeah. this does yeah. that, and you're like, oh my god, how do you yeah. fit all that stuff in there? That's People crazy. who spend a year making their vehicle right, and yeah. then a year traveling in their vehicle. This kid last night's like day twelve of me living on one hundred dollars. So he had a hundred dollar bill and he was trying to stretch it for thirty days. And yeah, but he's actually doing not like not bad. Like he he's not doing a lot. <laughs> it's not fun, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It didn't seem like it was fun. But he like today I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I went, oh okay. Oh. So he pulls up. He parked at a uh, Holiday Inn, mm-hmm. which makes sense. Then he doesn't uh, really though Holiday Inn. Like when you check into a hotel, they take your license plate yeah, number. Right. You know, if yeah. I don't know what they have security out there checking. If, if you go to one that's like a Disney or something, it's a big deal. But if you just go to a side road holiday and they're not oh. checking anything. So this guy parked at the holiday in. He said his favorite place to park, which which would be where Walmart. Now, you got to keep in mind. It's got it's got to be a place that's not going to bother you, not going to kick you out. And most likely have some sort of lights and security to make you feel safe. Like a Flying J or one of those big uh, stop. You got to pay there. Uh, oh, do you? To yeah. park, uh, yeah. What about uh, Bucky's or Wawa or something? So you're saying like, uh, well, Wawa is, I think, kind of too small. Yeah. Because you put, they probably only have like five car spaces anyway. This guy. You've uh, really never I been to a Wawa before, huh? A Walmart <laughs> or uh, like outside of a gym. Because they got the showers and stuff. Well, as well. He, he does go to Planet Fitness yeah. for the gym and all that stuff. He actually is one of the few people who live in their cars who join Planet Fitness to shower and work out. Oh, okay. He actually works out. Yeah. Most oh. people are like, oh, I went in to brush my teeth and took a shower. They don't touch the weights. <laughs> this guy's like, I took a yoga class, worked out for 30 minutes. And uh, he um, he parks at a hospital. Think about it. Hospital, mm-hmm. yeah. there's a lot of cars yeah, there. Sure, you yeah. kind of blend in. Yeah. Yeah. There's Light. plenty of lights. Open all night. Security, yeah. open all night. So I was like, that's genius. But what I've neglected to talk about is what kind of what kind of vehicle this person is living in. Mm. Anybody want to? Toyota what, Supra. What would, be, what would be fun? Like, what would be a cool? Like a big van. Like, like a van. A, yeah. Box truck, even. Yeah, something yeah. like that. This guy's living in a Kia. Oh, boy. And what he did is he took his back seat out and his uh, the passenger side. Well, he took his back seat out, and on the passenger side, he took his driver's seat out. And then he has, uh, from the trunk to the uh, dashboard, he could lay down on that right there. Mm. When he built a, his own mattress, he built a frame, and then he put down just on a, just had like that little thin mattress foam, 
And then he sleeps on that. I go, this guy's got the worst life ever. <laughs> yeah. And then he seems happy. And he's like, I'm stretching this $100 bill for 30 days. I go, what are you doing? Well, remember I told you the uh, girl, she was a cheerleader for the NFL. And then she just is, travels in her car and st- stays in her car. And she was in a uh, Prius. Yeah, oh. that's even worse. She was in a Prius, but then she started doing all the YouTube things. And then everyone's like, hey, you're hot. We'll give you a car. Yeah. You know, and they <laughs> build out all these things. And then now she has generators and solar panels and all this yeah. stuff. And she talks about them, you know, whenever I use this and da da da. And she makes salads. She's in, you know, good shape. Like she's healthy and stuff. And she has a dog with her that uh, you know, they do all their adventures and stuff. But she makes salads and she shows how she makes the salads. She'll get like the bag of uh lettuce with some stuff in it and then she'll get like carrots and you know how she cuts up the carrots? <laughs> she just bites it and spits it in there. I'd let her make me a salad. Yeah. Yeah, this, this guy was eating mostly at uh like he'd go to the store and he'd buy chicken or whatever and yeah. rice. Like he was making like chicken and rice. He had a Coleman stove and he'd make it all on his stove. And then when he needed ice and stuff, he'd just go into seven eleven and fill up on their ice machine. Like he didn't even buy ice. And uh, yeah, he's like, I, he goes, I went in seven eleven and bought ice and got some free ice because the Kirk was super cool. And and he just lives. And I thought, yeah, it's possible to do, but you're just basically right. homeless. Yeah, you're not. It's not like this isn't a yeah. fun adventure. And that yeah. goes under the uh, law of just because you can right. do it, it right. doesn't mean you should do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I saw this one family last night as a result of watching that first one. They're a family of five that live in a uh, a toy hauler. So they have a macked out RV kind of thing. The, the toy hauler, they just built it out so that the kids. I don't know what that is. That's like a big, um, almost like the like a tractor trailer kind of thing where you'd put like a car in or you'd put our, uh, ATVs in there. Okay, okay. And it's got a bathroom on it. And it's got a bedroom. And then they have this thing that comes down from the top. And that's another bed where the kids sleep on the bed. It was pretty cool. But I mean, they must be rich as all hell. Yeah, and he's pulling it with like a you know an F six fifty. Yeah, I'm like that's not you're not you know roughing it. Yeah, roughing it at <laughs> you're all. Clamping. They're yeah. just driving around the, the yeah. country, which is pretty cool. You know, I I honestly think like my son's pretty stupid. I think that <laughs> and he's graduating high school with a good GPA and he's pretty dumb. I feel like I could uh, have homeschooled him and taught him more than he actually learned in school. Like, if I sit him down and ask him questions about history, he's going to be like, I don't know. But I feel like if I would have just kept him home and talked to him about it, he'd retain more. Yeah. 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 I, math, I, he'd be screwed. But really, have we used any of our math? Right. That's the big thing. As I can long get him through you, fractions. Yeah. I mean, really, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Yeah. Computer. Yep. Yeah. Then you have the yeah, old the iPhone phone. that uh, does everything else for you. Yeah. I mean, y- y- you just have to teach some common sense and you have to teach some problem solving and then basic math. And I think they could figure out all the rest mm-hmm. of it out on their own. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And science, you need to know the basics in science. You know, you know plants make their own food. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you need to know. <laughs> like, right? Like, what else do you need yeah, to know? Yeah, don't, mix, don't mix this with that. No yeah. bleach and ammonia. <laughs> and then I'll buy yeah. one of those shower curtains you have with the periodic table yep, on it. Yep. Yeah. There you go. What goes the, up must come down. Then, exactly. he, then he's learning all the different states because you're driving through them all. Driving yeah. through them. Yeah. yeah. History. He doesn't easy. have to hear about Kentucky. Yeah. He's been to Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. The kid's been to like three continents before he was 15. So, uh, you know, they, I think they get more life lessons. Like, I'm telling you right now. First grade through eighth grade, uh, first grade through fifth grade. Keep them. <laughs> I told you, my son's friend asked me, he goes, Chicago's in Boston, right? Oh, I, go, I go, oh, my God. I go, you hurt my, I go, I think you just broke my brain. I go, are you serious? I go, you guys graduated from high school. What is going on? My daughter asked me. Well, if my son would have died, I probably would have made him leave the house. <laughs> My son, my uh, daughter asked me one time if New York was in Florida, but she was four. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I yeah. that. This girl I was dating <clears throat> thought the North Pole was one of the continents. Oh, uh, oof. that's pretty bad. That that is pretty is, bad. That's bad, but uh, and when I said no, she said the South Pole. I'm like, there's oh, no poles. Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite is my wife's friend, who at the time was twenty something, maybe thirty, whatever. Thought that uh, limes were just unripe lemons. Okay, all right. Is she hot though? Is that okay? If she was hot, yeah. 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 (laughs) Hand me one of those unripe lemons, will you? (laughs) All right, it is Tuesday. Dom will be here in the nine o'clock hour to take your legal calls, which I feel like less and less people need legal advice. Oh, Spanish. Yes. Mark this on the. I should remind Mike about this, but if I forget, it's not my fault. Okay. I got to call jury duty and tell him I'm going to be out of the country when I'm supposed to have jury duty next week. Got it. I'll remind you. 
gotta forget that. I don't want to go to jail. I gotta forget that. I mean, I gotta remember <laughs> no, that. Well, you that already done. forgot it. Is everybody locked in and registered for the cruise? Dizzy, you no. already locked in? All yeah, that? I all finished right. everything yesterday for me. Good. No, I still good. have to log in. You do? Yeah. Well, is there anybody who thinks that Spanish isn't gonna make it for some reason? <laughs> sure. Why? I always think he's not gonna make it here. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. I'll be there. I'm very excited to go. I feel like you're gonna get back with Karen. No. You say that now. No. Mm. No. That wouldn't be good in, in any way. Not right now. Like when? 15 years from now? No, no. Like three months from now, you mm. guys are like, hey, it's been three months. Maybe we should have coffee. No. And then you have coffee and you're like, I still have you. I still have you. Mm. <laughs> and then you guys <laughs> ride on an elephant to, to the courthouse uh, and get married. No, and his heart no. belongs to somebody else. Yeah. Thank you, you Calvin. Didn't that? Come on. He <laughs> listens. You said, I thought you didn't listen. You listen. <laughs> inner, inner peace. Yeah. Well, I, I forgot what the list was. So I, I'm not going to say it. I'm not, I don't want to get I am honest. Out. My heart belongs to her, too. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't really know her that well. She's awesome. One of the coolest people I've ever met. Mm. I feel like you're trying to make up for things. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah. I would like to, but, uh, you know, I would just like the opportunity to get in front of her again. But, you yeah, know, it is what it is. Maybe you should try gay stuff for a little while. I will not. Okay. I will not. That's yeah. not just my thing. want to see how vulnerable thing. you yeah. are. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Again, still strong. Uh, again, <laughs> don't don't say it like that. All right, let's take a break. We got a lot of things to talk about. We got bridges falling. Oh, we got child actors getting raped. We've got uh, Diddy is in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. We got Sporkle first. That happens next on one hundred two five The Bone. All right, let's do it right now. A little bit of Sporkle. Here we go. I saw Dizzy was smart enough to take his headphones off. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just sit here and let my uh, ears bleed and scab. <laughs> Carmen is the keeper of Sporkle. Pap Pap is your judge and scorekeeper. Dizzy sitting in for Geo. Carmen, what are we playing today? All right, we haven't done this in quite some time. Today, we're going to do some easy math. Damn it. All right, easy math. Here we go 16 divided by 2. Galvin. Seven birds are on a fence. Three fly away. Four. How many? Mike? Uh, I was waiting for more. Put my pen down. Pay attention. (laughs) Eight plus five. Thirteen. Galvin. Five plus two. Seven. Seven. Galvin. Galvin. Hundred percent. Pap pap. <laughs> yes, Galvin. Oh, All right, there we go. Good job, Joe. <laughs> Fifty-five divided by eleven. Five. five. Spanish. Twenty-nine minus twenty. Nine. 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 Spanish. Uh, pap pap. Yes, Spanish. Okay, Spanish gets the point. Three times seven times two times Uh, zero times 18. Everyone answered? I believe so, yeah. Zero was the answer. 24 divided by four. Six. Six. (laughs) Galvin. (laughs) (laughs) Don't laugh at me. 46 times two. 92. 192. Uh, 46 times 2. 92. Oh, yeah. Is that, yeah. That's what I said. Okay, I did not hear that. I thought you said 192. I did, because I'm stupid. Point Mike. Mike. Mike, it's the point. 13 times 3. 39. Mike. 7 times 9. 63. 56. Mm-hmm. 63. Yes, that's right. Eight. Stupid. <laughs> this is what I was looking for. Mike gets the point. And Pap Pap, we're halfway oh. there. Dizzy is not on the board. He has a total of zero. Spanish with two. Michael and Galvin both doubling that with four. They're tied for first. At least you're consistent with Geo scoring. <laughs> Math is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it is dumb, dude. I should have homeschooled my kids. <laughs> I went to school for broadcasting. Uh, <laughs> that's also dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Easy math. Halfway there. Here we go. 17 minus 9. 12. 8. 8. Yes. <laughs> Dizzy. Yeah. 0 plus 6. 6. Spanish. 7 plus 13. 20. 20 is correct. Pat <laughs> Pat. Galvin. Uh, Galvin gets the point. 5 times 0. 0. zero. Spanish. 36 divided by 9. 4. Spanish. Eight plus four. Twelve. Galvin. Eight times five. Thirty-five. Uh, Forty-five. Yeah. Forty. No. Uh, Forty. 
Oh. Mike Dizzy. already answered. Dizzy, Dizzy? didn't answer. Oh, 40. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dizzy gets the point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Core four. Core, Core 40. <laughs> Five minus two. Three. Three. Galvin. What is the perimeter in inches of a square with eight inch sides? 32. 32. Mike and Pap Pap, we're on the last three. Dizzy is on the board. He has two points. Michael in Spanish with five, and Galvin is your leader right now. He's winning with seven. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. That's two more. Yes. Than we have. <laughs> and we have three left. In easy math, here we go. Ten plus one. Eleven. Eleven. Mike. Oh, I was waiting for more. I know. <laughs> Ten times five. Fifty. 50. Spanish. And your last one. Fifty-nine plus five. Sixty-four. Sixty-four, <laughs> Galvin. Oh, ju judge. Yeah, I would have said Spanish. Yeah, I would have said me. I got it out before. That's your fair. final score. <laughs> Dizzy with two points. Yep. Michael and Spanish both with six, and Galvin is your triumphant champion today. He won with eight. <laughs> Woo! Trademark 2024. You went to school for broadcasting? Uh, broadcast communications, yeah. Where? Uh, in Toronto. Oh, you went like to a real college? Yeah. yeah Not yeah. to like that uh, Connecticut no, stupid no, 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 no. school yeah. like Seth used to teach at? Yeah, no, no. I got it in uh, broadcast. What do you do if you roll into a school? To learn about broadcast, and they send a failure at that to teach you. Yeah, but, you get I mean, your money back, saying. right? I mean, like, I, I guess if you're a starstruck young kid in the business, and you're like, "Oh, this guy was on 97X," uh, he must know what he's doing. Yeah, those who can't do teach, Michael. I know, I know. <laughs> it's funny because uh, I, whenever I thought about getting into radio, my parents were like, "Well, you know, if you want to go to broadcasting school or do something like that," and I said. No, I think I'll just go and try and get a job there. I yeah. figure I'll learn more that way. I do did not learn much in there at all. So I could have learned that. I, I used to teach a bartending class, and there were people that go to like the bar institute, you know, whatever, and pay a ton of money. And I didn't yeah. charge a lot. And uh, I had one lady at the end of the first uh, lesson that I taught. She goes, I spent so much money and I learned more in this one lesson yep. than I learned in the entire eight week course or whatever that I took at the other one. I go, yeah, yeah. well, you know, you kind of got to do apply it to actual things as if they're teaching you all kind of stuff that you don't need to know. When I went to, I was in radio, I, like as an intern and promotion and stuff. Then I left and I moved to Miami and I tried to finish school down there and I took a radio class. It was actually called radio. And they had a radio station that didn't really broadcast anywhere, but it was set up like with old radio station equipment. So I went in there, and they were like, um, the first day they taught you how to record your voice on a cassette tape, and I, was, and I quit right after that. I was like, oh, okay, I'm done. But I, they were teaching you the mechanics of the, of the, you know, the gadgets that were in there and things you should learn how to use. <laughs> the most successful show in this area is this show. No one is going to teach you to scream "kachaya" after oh, you yeah. win. Yeah. <laughs> Follow it up with a "woo woo woo." That's right. Yeah. yeah, I think I learned everything my first year. It's like they showed you the board, they kind of give you the mm -hmm. gist of it, and then after that, it's like improv classes and all that stuff. Where it's like you, you don't need those. No, yeah. and and to be honest with you, and Galvin will back me up on this. I'm terrible at running the board. Like, thankfully, <laughs> Carmen does it, and the little things that I have to do here, like play the music, and I still screw up all the time. You can you can learn that as much as you want. That's the stuff that they can teach you, but the stuff that they can't teach you is the stuff that makes you successful. Right. I just I just love that Seth was teaching classes. Yeah. I would have walked. I would have been like, oh, this is a failure. Yeah. I'll imagine you sat down and you just hear, "Hey, bro, today we're gonna." Oh my like, god! Oh, oh, oh what man! <laughs> or if if uh, if I went in there and they were like, uh, "This semester." Radio veteran and newly retired Jack Harris is going to teach a class. You're like, okay, this yeah, is a guy who go. did it for 50 years. Let me learn what I can learn. Even if it's old school stuff, at least let me learn from a guy who who's a master at it. I'll never forget the first time uh, Dinah and John Brendan asked me to edit audio on Adobe Audition, and I lied, and I was like, oh, yeah, I could totally do that. Uh, and then I had to tell Dinah I didn't know how to, and she was like, go ask Galvin. Galvin can teach you. I asked Galvin, and he, I mean, you edited like an hour clip in 30 seconds, and I just remember looking at it, he did it real quick, and he was like, and that's how you do it. And I just went, yep, uh, okay, like, definitely, yeah, I, definitely. I may, I may not be the best teacher. <laughs> I know how to do it, but maybe yeah, not teaching. You know, did you ever use it? I think it was called a DSR. It's a machine 
that it looked like an old Radio Shack Tandy computer. It's a one piece with its own keyboard and a, a spinny tool. Yeah, I know what you're talking and, about. And it's been like a spin ball. And you were not even a ball. It was a, it was a round rotator thing. And you would record audio in there so that it would be a wave, and then you'd be able to edit it all in there. Yeah, it was all digital. Oh, and yeah. that that's what you used for phone calls a lot, right? Phone calls. Yeah, yeah. I think they called it, a, we had one, I think it was a 360 or something. No, like the 360 that. is flat like this. This looked like an actual computer. Oh, okay. It looked like the old Tandy that was a one piece. No. And, uh, and I would get on there with that spinny thing, and I could record, I mean, I could edit just taking spaces out and all that stuff pretty quick. And I was like, zip, 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 zip. But then somebody really get at it, like Spice Boy would get on it, and it looked like he was trying to start a fire by rubbing the thing. It, it, he moves so fast like he had eight hands. Uh, you just get so used to doing it <laughs> yeah, that the yeah. people that were really good at it were yeah. just crushing it, man. Yeah, Galvin had it. I, I'll never forget looking at I remember looking at your screen, and you had a multi-track up, which I didn't even know what that was at right. that time. And it was like six clips that you edited individually, and then you did something, and they all became one, and then you changed the volume, and I was just like, oh, I am not going to be good at this. I think I remember uh, you were doing something with the CD, and I go, you know, you can just rip that. Yep. Because yeah. he was recording it in in real time, mm -hmm. so if it was an hour, he had to wait <laughs> yeah. an hour. Yeah. And I go, yeah, just put it in there. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. I go, there's your tracks. Yeah. And you're like, what? Because that hey. Dinah was the one who taught me how I had to listen to it live and record it in yeah. live. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes live Lying, though is is the best way to get you in there. Oh, I lied to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah this yeah. guy I worked with Hawk Harrison. He he uh, worked at a TV station too, and they asked him if he could do uh, fill in overnights on the weekend. He was like, "Oh yeah, I've done this before. He'd never been on TV yeah. before. It was great." Oh, mm. uh, Galvin, what do we have coming up in news? There's a lot of things happening today. Yes, coming up in news today, Mike O is gonna be mad. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, why the Empire State Building fall too? Uh, it's got something else. Uh, uh, Diddy. Or did he not? No. And uh, it's hip to be square. Okay. All right. Carmen. Yes. Yesterday on the show, the yeah. show started, and we couldn't hear you, but you could hear us, and there was complete panic on the show. Do you recall? Yes. I've got the video of exactly when Carmen panicked. Oh. Her face is the funniest thing you'll ever see. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not not flattering or anything like that. You just see all of a sudden the look of panic come over Carmen's face. Oh, no. I'm gonna during the break, I'm gonna put that up on her Instagram. Oh. It's, it's good stuff. Uh, we'll take a break. Galvin Ash News will do it next on 1025 the bone. I feel like I had a poop, but like oh, no. since yesterday. Oh boy. Just sitting somewhere. <laughs> It's like way across the border. Yeah. Oh. Is that healthy? Yeah. It's sitting <laughs> since yesterday. <laughs> I ate a lot yesterday. Yeah. I did not have three McGriddles, but we were oh. in Sarasota. We went to Rocco's Tacos for lunch. Oh, Rocco's Tacos. And it's just sitting there. I got a burrito bowl bowling in my belly. Mm. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 712. Let's check in with Calvin. He's got today's news. And now, news with Galvin on the Mike Calter Show. What do we have in news today, Gal? Today's news is brought to you by Pelt Shoes. If you're over in Sarasota, you could stop in one of the Pelt Shoes. They have uh, six locations throughout Pinellas, Sarasota, and Fort Myers. And we're getting close to the cruise. There's the ship horn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just nine wow. days away from Celtic Cruise 17. So if you're looking to, uh, I was doing some shopping yesterday. Maybe you need some new shoes for the cruise, some cruise shoes. Well, stop in the pelts. They have the uh, boating shoes like Sperry. They have flip flops, Birkenstocks. They have the Hey Dudes that everybody loves. You can just uh, slip those on and off really easy, and they dry easy too. So those would be perfect for the cruise. But you don't have to be going on the cruise to stop in the pelts. If you need some athletic shoes, you need some dress shoes, you need some boots or heels, whatever you need, they have them right there in stock, ready to go. Stop into a pelts today and make sure you tell them Galvin from the Mike Kelta Show hey. sent you. Uh, so the Francis Scott Key Bridge, a major span critical to East Coast shipping, collapsed early Tuesday after it was struck by a large cargo ship, prompting a mass emergency response from at least uh, for at least seven people in the water. The Baltimore City Fire and Department uh, Fire Department described the collapse as a mass casualty incident. The Associated Press reported that several vehicles had plunged into the river below. Could you imagine well, your driving it, and your car goes into the river? No. It's so interesting that you say this because I went, drove over the Skyway Bridge yesterday. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going over the Skyway, now for those people who don't know, maybe we just moved here, the Skyway had a, a bridge that was there before this one right next to it, which you could still see the remnants of that bridge that a ship crashed into, knocking the bridge down, cars plunging in the water, people dying. 
And I'm going over and I go, so is this safe now? Like, is this bridge so high that no ship will ever crash into it? And I go, that's got to be a really, at this, with the science that we have and the technology that we have, it's got to be really dumb to crash into a bridge. Mm -hmm. This guy looked like he was aiming for it. Right? So, uh, do you have it on Bone TV, Joe? Yes. It's Mm incredible. It's incredible to watch. So, I, um, uh, let's see. Ship tracking data from LSEG shows Singapore flag container ship, the Dolly, at the location along the key bridge where the uh, accident occurred. Synergy Marine Corps said that uh, Dolly collided with one of the pillars of the bridge and that uh, all of its crew members, including two pilots, had been accounted for and uh, there were no reports of injuries. So, so the ship crashed into one of the pilings like dead center yeah, in the bridge. Right at it like it was aiming for it. And, mm-hmm. it. and the way the bridge is, is that once that fell, the rest of the bridge just began to fall around it and collapse. And you can see certain videos they show where the cars just go right down into the water. Yeah. I think that is one of my biggest fears. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. more afraid of that than I am of getting attacked by a lion. <laughs> sure. yeah, for real. Because yeah. like I'm not going to run into a lion. If I do, I'd be like, oh, look, a lion. Then I'd be dead. Mm-hmm. But uh, the idea that I'm going to go off the bridge into the water in my car and your car fills up with water. Yeah. It's dark. And it's especially that at night. Yeah. It's oh. cold. The, oh. yeah. the weight of the bridge is so strong that it would pull you. Pull you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's going under mm-hmm. and the water would be sucking oh. down. Yeah. I gotta tell you, uh, they, uh, do they have a casualty number yet? I know they were still searching. Yeah, well, they said uh, no, uh, were no reports of any injuries. So I don't know whether that's just for the people that were on the ship or whether that's everybody included the people that were in the cars or anything like that. I am breaking news. Yeah. Joe? Yes, my Are we on Bone TV? Yes. I'm getting reports we're not on Bone TV. We are connected to Bone TV. We were not earlier in the, in the morning, but it is turned on. Why not? Uh, this morning I had to reset this program, Oh boy! so it took me about five minutes to get that done. All right, but well, we should be back. We are back. You're saying confidently we are back. Mm-hmm. We're on YouTube? Yes. So you can go to calta.tv? Yes, uh, yes right. you can. All right, I'm mm-hmm. going to check it. All right. Can All right. you give us a good, solid, we're back, baby? We're back, baby! <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm on the YouTube. We are on, uh, we are on the YouTube. Well, YouTube... Yes. Are we on Bone TV? I do though? not. Uh, I'm on the Bone website. I'm pulling up Bone TV you. right now. Let me see... And it is black. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I see nothing. Oh, that's no, what wait, I got an ad. I got an ad. I had the ad. Oh, you and did then have I the ad? To, and oh, then no. that's what you got. That's what I have right now. I got, a, I got an email from uh, Nahal, a text, rather, who rats me out when my wife got my wife's up. She's, <laughs> she's never wrong. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I posted the picture, Carmen. Did you see it? I did. You, is it not funny? <laughs> that is, listen, it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. If you go to our Instagram right now, at the Mike Calta Show, you will see a picture of Carmen and a video of her. The picture is when the uh, horror came in yesterday when she realized the show had started and she couldn't hear us or it wasn't going over the air or whatever it is, and she absolutely panicked. <laughs> and then the video that goes along with that where you can see Carmen make that panicky face comes in. It's hilarious. Carmen, more panic Bone TV not working or going off a bridge into the water? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The bridge, for sure. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. That's a close second. Looks pretty scary. <laughs> uh, two properties belonging to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs oh. in Los, An- Los Angeles and Miami were searched Monday by federal Homeland Security Investigations agents and other law enforcement as a part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation by federal authorities in New York. <clears throat> it's a... Uh, not clear whether Combs was the target of the investigation. Probably. But they had his kids in the handcuffs. <laughs> uh, yeah. The officials were not authorized to publicly discuss details of the investigation. In a statement, Homeland Security Investigations said it, quote, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. They didn't so find anything. No they, way. They said that they were searching for uh, sex traffic or for mm. tra- human trafficking reasons. And they were carrying stuff out. They had his kids in handcuffs. They dragged everybody that was in the house outside. You don't think they found anything? I don't think they found I think the who he uh, Diddy is connected with, I think they knew that this was coming and he yeah. got rid of everything way before. Okay, but here's the thing. If you get rid of it, rid of it. Like, if you destroy like it, burn get rid it of it. Yeah, do some pour coke on it, burn it, do everything else. If you think you deleted the stuff, right. they're You're fine right. and all that. I, I agree. So whatever, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know how smart they are. They may have taken it. It may be over in Bangladesh now, you know, <laughs> yeah, being yeah. burned up and do, who knows what. 
But if it's in the area, even if he moved it somewhere else or whatever, but if he thought he deleted those files, man, those yeah. tech guys can find all that. That stuff. is what's scary. But you're right. If he moved his stuff to like offsite servers out of the country, there's no getting any of that. Yeah, I'd move my stuff off on a boat and, and yeah. uh, I'd go all the way out and then it would well, in the water. It, these, much like the NXT guys, are very smart when it comes to all this. And they know eventually if something goes wrong, they're going to get raided. Like, you know, you, you know that that's going to happen. So but I the imagine thing, they all have. I was going to say the thing about smart people. Always somebody smarter. You're yeah. right. So You're right. Somebody so they, uh, he was in the Caribbean. Yeah. He got out of town. Just yeah. so happened he was out of the country. Right. While they went in there and went through his stuff. Interesting. Can he let his kids stay there? Of course. That's you got to make rude. it look real. Yeah. Can, I get... be, can I be Diddy's lawyer for a minute? Yeah. This is what I would do. I would say the charges against my client are sex trafficking. Did he do it? Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> Diddy. I just keep on saying Diddy. <laughs> Diddy. <laughs> Because if his houses were all rigged up with a bunch of cameras and he has video of all these people, celebrities, right. politicians interacting and having intercourse with people underage, I don't imagine that's Is what that what getting. we think's happening? Uh, that's what they're alleging. Underage yeah. sex? Yeah. Yes. Through a party. Yeah. White that's, parties. I don't. Party. What are they? <laughs> White parties. Why you got to be racist? <laughs> <laughs> White party. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, underage sex, but also weren't they saying that there was a lot of turning? Yep. People, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. there was. and then they well, would have, they would have yeah. that yeah. on them, you know, yep. Usher and stuff. They say he yeah. proved and everything. Justin Bieber, mm. Mm. Oh, how dare you disagree, hey. Justin Bieber? I'm sorry, I, I love the Bieber. So but... it just goes down the line. So Diddy does uh, Usher, mm -hmm. Usher does Bieber, yep. Bieber does the next one. Don't Bieber's you... like, I'm gonna leave and marry this really hot girl. Don't yeah. you remember there was a rumor that Dr. Dre was gay? Oh, for no, a while? Yeah. no, no, no. The thing with Dr. Dre was. Is that Dr. Dre liked to be uh, stimulated through his prostate? Right. Yeah. Not necessarily that he was gay. Well, mm -hmm. that well, listen to me. I have never had that done before, but they say it is fantastic. Right. So I, I also sit here and think I will never put a rope around my neck to masturbate yeah, because ma masturbating is pretty good where it is, where it's at. <laughs> I don't need to take a chance. So uh, if I did it though, and it was so great, I might be like, let me try that again. Let me yeah. try that again. Till one day I do it wrong. Yeah. So Dr. Dre, I don't know that I don't. The story wasn't that he that he liked uh, gay stuff. It was mm -hmm. just that he was like being stimulated there. The problem with that though is okay. So you like that, mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, well, a finger is nice. What about something a little bit yeah. bigger and fleshy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And I don't know what they're doing. You got Eminem and Fifty Cent that are all tied in with all that stuff. Great Eminem, I'm just really. saying. I'm just saying with. I you, bet you your mom's spaghetti. He didn't do anything like that. You can't just assume that if Diddy's doing all this, it's, this is an isolated incident. You know what I mean? If These... you're Eminem and you're living in a trailer with your daughter in uh, the wrong <laughs> side of the tracks in Detroit, uh -huh. and Dr. Yeah. Dre calls you and says, I got an idea for you. I'm going to make you the greatest white rapper of all time. But you got to do this. Yeah. I'd be like, boop, boop, let's <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's what happened. Diddy's know. bodyguard spoke out on this like years ago. Oh, and everyone yeah. just thought he was like a hate Bitter crazy. Bodyguard, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then all these allegations came out. Yeah. You know, and he Did was talking about like with he was uh buying sex toys with his uh with Diddy and then uh him and like Ja Rule used to mess around. Ja Rule, ja yeah, Rule. man. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give it to me, baby. And is that a completely different guy from the guy who said he walked in on Will Smith? <laughs> doing yeah. Stuff? Yes. those guys, those yeah. are that's a different guy. <laughs> yeah. Different guy, yeah. yeah. So Everybody's all these guys be... turning on their yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, I think everybody's gay but me. Maybe. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty good. It's never too late. Yeah. And then the I know Diddy's head of security is also linked to a couple other celebrities that have had uh mishaps. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it is. I like, mean we're gonna be hearing a lot more yeah. oh. about this for sure. I, I can't so. wait for the documentary. Oh my yeah. god. Dude. That would be awesome. And Hesh was murdered, by the way, 100%. 100%. 100%. She sat up while well, she was yeah. dead. Dude, like, if you have not seen that video of Anne Hesh sitting up on a stretcher in a body bag, yeah. unzipping the body bag and sitting straight yeah. up, being put in the ambulance, that is the wildest thing yeah. in the world. And why people aren't talking about that? I don't no, know. She's dead. She's dead. Yeah. She's dead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, she's definitely dead. <sighs> and the audio of her in her car is so eerie because you can tell that she, that it. It was the car was speeding up with her trying to hit the brake. Yeah. And yeah. She was screaming. Yeah. And she kept trying to hit the brake and it nothing was working. The other thing is is you see all these different celebrities. Do you remember when she was crazy, Mike? Whenever they put out how crazy she, she was? Showing yeah. up at, at, in the street or nothing. What? Yeah. Do you think that was just a uh, a smear campaign? Smear yeah. campaign. Yeah. yeah, like all these different people that you're like, "Oh, they're crazy." And then you look into stuff and you go, Oh, yeah. Are they crazy yeah. or did they just tell us they were crazy? 
you know, the media told us they were crazy because the higher ups are pulling the strings. Oh, yeah, Galvin, I just well, watched the video of her get out of the body bag. Yeah, yeah. She, dude, she gets up and, she, and tries yeah. to climb out. Yeah, yeah. and, and she like shoots up out of it, and they put but, her back in, and you never hear from her I'm again. Feeling better, and that's what like Kanye has been claiming for years yeah. that it's just a giant smear campaign against him, to, and everyone calls him crazy and says he's bipolar, this and that. Well, he's crazy. Can, yeah, can I tell you, uh, he's not helping uh, his case. The way not. he, the, the stuff that he says and everything yeah. is, you know. He's We're, not, but I mean, it just goes to show like they can do it to anybody. Yeah, they yeah. can. Yeah, and I mean, maybe he wasn't crazy, but then uh, you know, because he was alleging that he was being forced to take pills and stuff from his head of security, and they were keeping him on lockdown. And- do you think the whole Kim Kardashian thing was listen? We're going to hook you up with the hottest chick on earth. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Just stop talking. I do. You know what I mean? I like, definitely do. <laughs> it totally yeah. could be. I made a joke with uh, Joe and Dizzy the other day where I was like, a lot of these celebrities now that are turning on, on and t- talking about being raped, it's almost like when they get into it as kids, they're given the option, well, you're going to get raped a bunch, and then you're going to be famous and set for the rest of your life, and still they'll turn on it and yeah. start talking. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how it works. I, well, I'm, You want to be famous? Listen, not to bring up uh, bad stuff stuff that you had to go through but like you uh uh you know apologize and did you apologize to karen or what did you what, t- yesterday forgave yeah, yeah forgave you forgave her, her. Forgave yeah. her. sorry yeah that was for you though yeah 100%. you can't go on for the rest of your life holding 100%. that and doing all that stuff so these people can't go for the yeah. rest of their life yeah i'm famous and i have millions of dollars and all that stuff but guess what this stuff happened to me and i'm not gonna sit here and take that right you know what i mean so. and they lash out and do ridiculous things Wild. yeah uh, a New York appellate court on Monday halted collection of a 464 million civil judgment against former President Donald Trump and gave him 10 days to post a $175 million bond in the case. The ruling came on the day Trump hit a deadline to post bond to cover the judgment leveled against him uh, last month by a judge in New York. I love what I was thinking about yesterday, Galvin, because I was watching the people on like CNN and M- MSNBC just melt down down over oh, yeah. this. Yeah, they were so upset that he got it reduced to a hundred something million dollars. Uh, they really are emotionally oh, like it bro. makes you like you can watch this from an outsider's view and you go, all right, this guy's crazy. His big mouth got him in trouble. Then you watch how happy these people are and you go, oh. well, they're crazy too. Right. 100%. Yeah. yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Remember when news was unbiased and they would just yeah. tell you yeah. the news and stuff? Yeah. I miss it. It's wild. Uh Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun uh, will step down at the end of 2024 and part of a broad management shakeup for the embattled aerospace giant. Larry Kellner, chairman of the board, will not stand for re-election at Boeing's annual meeting in May. Uh, he will be succeeded uh, as chair by uh, Steve Mollenkampf, who uh, has been uh, Boeing director since 2020 and is a former CEO of uh, Qualcomm. Mollenkampf uh, will lead the board in picking a new CEO. Oh, good. Yeah, so if you have stock in <laughs> Boeing, it's probably not going well right now. Yeah. Uh, people, they say people are booking their flights now to, to avoid being on a Boeing plane. Yeah. Because you always go... If there was a crash, you're like, I'm going to fly out because you'll never get in a crash twice. Now when two doors are flying off in one week, you're like, all right, I'm yeah. afraid to get on anything. And, and remember, wasn't Boeing the same company that was having that issue where they installed that new software into their planes and it was causing planes to crash yeah, and they yeah, weren't yeah. telling the pilots? I mean, it just seems like Boeing has gone through a lot. I have to fly soon. I don't want to know a final plane I'm on. Yeah. I don't want to know yeah. that. Mm. Yeah, you used to worry about the airline. Now you're worrying about the actual plane. Right? You know? Now all of a sudden the planes from the 80s in Russia that they use don't seem so bad anymore. Dude, did you ever <laughs> see any of the stuff about the hockey players? You made me wa- Well, you told me to watch it. it. That is the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Did you ever see that stuff, Mike? What is it? The hockey players over in Russia and like Americans that would go over there and the planes that they would use for the different hockey teams. <laughs> Dude. There there were uh, players. You probably talked to Vincent LeCavier right. yeah. played during the strike here for Russia. And when he came back, he said the scariest thing in his life was flying on those planes. <laughs> he said they would have like holes in the floor of Dude, the plane like, that they were flying in. Oh, and, my like, God. Seats would just break. And oh. this, that, like <laughs> wings were barely attached with like duct tape. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was wild. It's man. good duct tape. Uh, the NFL is eliminating the hip drop tackle. I know that's your favorite Spanish. Thank What's you. a hip drop tackle? Well, I have a example for Thank you on you. Bone TV or YouTube, wherever we're showing. There is a hip hip drop hip 
drop tackle right there. The NFL team's owners on Monday unanimously approved the rule that bans the players from using a swivel technique to tackle an opponent. A violation will result in a 15-yard penalty and could ultimately uh, result in fines for players. NFL executive Jeff Miller said the hip drop tackle was used 230 times in the last season and resulted in 15 players missing time with injuries. So that's the big concern is that it injures people whenever you tackle them like that. How many things they can take away from you? Well, the NFL Players Association has adamantly opposed the rule. They say this is BS. Just play two-hand touch at this point. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. They tried that for the Pro Bowl and nobody watched it. So that's where where it's coming to. Uh, I put up the video of Van Hage escaping from the body bag on our Instagram. Yeah. uh, At the Mike Calder Show. If you haven't seen it or if you haven't watched it in a while, go watch it. I mean, this is a woman, a full-bodied woman Unzipping her body bag and trying to escape as they shove her into an ambulance. Yeah, man. Mm. You ever watch so wrestling weird. when, like, the Undertaker gets knocked out and just gets up? That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 sound. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Uh, so the Mega Millions jackpot is tonight. The drawing is tonight, and that is $1.1 billion that we talked about. Powerball drawing was on Monday. Oh. Nobody won. Oh. Right. Roll it over. We're going to be rich. There's a. Million dollar ticket that was sold at the Publix in Land Lakes. Really? Yeah. Did you check? Uh, well, the uh, next drawing for Powerball will be Wednesday, and the jackpot is eight hundred and sixty-five million dollars. So almost two be billion rich. dollars between the two. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're going on vacation, guys. <sighs> I'm not going to. Vacation. I'm buying my ticket. What? What do you mean? We, if if I win and I give you a good chunk of money, will you throw those beats away? Oh no. Oh. You probably wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why would I? Hold on. Listen to this. If he was a Spanish, $5 million, you get $5 million. You can never wear those beads. You can never tell us about astro projecting. You can never tell us about how you feel or your. Yeah, no emotions. Any of that stuff. (laughs) And you can never say I love you before you hang up the phone. Nah, keep your money. What? Oh, you're the worst. That's who I am, man. You're not getting any money. <laughs> That's you're not getting I any hope money. I win. I hope I win because I'm just gonna I'm gonna shower you with love and money. That's you will be allowed to stay in the hammock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. All right. Then I'm in. I'll take the five million and get rid of the beads. Fine. You will be able to stay in the hammock, but we will have crossbows. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. Just letting you know. Tipped or are they dull tipped? Uh, I think oh, you'll, come on. you'll find out when you find out. <laughs> now that I've seen you in the hammock, I want to just go spin it like a cocoon. Please don't do that. There. Please don't do that. Uh, by the way, speaking of getting hit by a crossbow or something, <laughs> so we always see movies where people get shot and all this stuff, and they still fight and do everything. Guy gets hit in the head with a bat, and then he yeah. shakes his head yeah. and comes at you. And stuff. <laughs> totally unrealistic. Uh, Did you see the female reporter that got shot in the wrist the other day? No. Uh, no. I, I, I don't know whether it was over Gaza or where it was. I, it was somewhere else but I'm not sure where it was. She's wearing a helmet and she's obviously a journalist and she has a microphone and she's speaking and she gets shot in the wrist. That's a real reaction. She goes, you just hear, and she goes, "Ah!" (laughs) just freaking out and she runs off camera, but she still has the microphone so you can hear her just losing her mind. You just got shot in the wrist. That's going to shatter your bones. It's going to go through. Yeah. It feels so hot. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just imagine like the biggest wasp in the world flying 90 miles per hour through your wrist. (laughs) What what did she scream like? (laughs) (laughs) The face. It is wild, man. Uh, Mike, so you were talking about uh, lifeguard and getting your uh, colonoscopy and doing all that type of stuff. Right. They have the virtual one. It's not as invasive as the other one. Well, this is pretty weird. Find out if they find any bugs back there. In my, in my butt? Yeah. Cracked.com posted a list of seven different insects that have been found during people's colonoscopies. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> what? A fly. An ant, moth. No, please don't say spider. A bee, mm. a, bee. a wasp, uh, uh, and a cockroach. Uh, oh, oh. Dude. in your ass. Yeah. yeah. Well, colon. Oh, oh yeah. so way up further than you're right. talking about. Yeah. How does that? I mean, that, that's. I mean, listen. I'm gonna tell you right now. There's no way any of those bugs. Or getting in there on their mm-hmm. own, mm-hmm. they got to. They'd have to have help, especially a fly <laughs> or a bee. Do you think anybody's yeah. putting it in there to let them fly around? I, I mean, is it the lady that swallowed the spider to get the fly? <laughs> like, are you, what are you doing? I'm What's thinking going more on? of the uh, actor who <laughs> put the. What was it? They were putting animals in there. Gerbils. Was it yeah. Richard well, Gere? Nah, before Richard, the yeah, gerbils. Gere, yeah. I mean, after the gerbils, 
It was another small type animal because they get in there and they try to escape. I oh, think that was God. the gerbil. The gerbil. Yeah. I know Richard Geary got the gerbil. Yeah. By the way, I'd like to point out the lady that swallowed the fly, <laughs> then she swallowed a spider to get the fly. Then you Wait. know what she swallowed? Swallowed to get the spider? What? A bird. <laughs> then you Wait. know what she swallowed after the bird? A cat. A cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what she swallowed to get rid of the cat? The dog. A dog. Uh, you know what she swallowed to get rid of the dog? Now I'm interested. Uh, a goddamn horse. <laughs> what? I don't know why the horse is getting rid of the dog, but this lady <laughs> swallowed a horse. Like, how what is it, going on? How did she swallow a horse? I don't know. One piece at a time. <laughs> All I know is she's really fun at parties. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Lady, just, I don't know, maybe drink something. <laughs> Stop swallowing things. A horse. Have you seen the video? Well, I just posted it a couple weeks ago, the guy that had the spider in his ear. Oh, no. He's laying down, and somebody pours, I think it's hydrogen peroxide, and, and it he just, they and just, and oh, the spider dude. comes out. Uh, 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 yeah. I mean, it comes running out, and then he had long hair, and it crawled up into his uh, hair, and then it disappeared. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, uh, my wife's friend who was here the other day, she, uh, this is why I hate people, and I like her, but this, she saw a palmetto bug upstairs. So, what did she do? Run all away? She called the exterminator. Screamed. And- all of these are acceptable answers. She put a cup over it because she didn't want to kill it. Oh, oh, I get it. So my wife goes, well, scoop it up and throw it outside if yeah. you're such a nature lover. And she's like, no. And then she said, I don't want her. She had her young son. I don't want my son to see me kill the insect. I don't know. Oh, Jesus man. Christ. So I went, upstairs, I went upstairs three days later, took it up, and it was like I woke up the palmetto bug. I was like, oh, hey, I was just under here. And I just went, boom, smashed the light. <laughs> oh. And then I want to, take a, up to that? I want to yeah. take a picture of it and send it to her son. Yeah. By the way, I'm such a humanitarian. I'm going to starve this bug. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just yeah. going to die in a small area right? starving to death. And no right. oxygen. Yeah. In the, yeah. yeah. Good luck. Mm. Uh, someone in Canada reported an impaired driver after they saw him crash through a sign that said, Report impaired drivers. <laughs> yeah, not great. Uh, there's a picture on Bone TV. Look at his trucks all smashed up. A little sign right down there. Report impaired drivers. <laughs> uh, pizza Hut is running a $12 pizza promotion for the big eclipse that's coming up next month, and they're calling it a total eclipse of the hut. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, Mike is going to be mad about this, man. What? I'm telling you right now, he's going to be very upset. Bananas going, prices going high. Banana addicts oh. are freaking out at Trader Joe's. They announced they're raising the price of a single banana for the first time in over two decades. Oh. How much is a single banana? What would you say? A single 78 banana? cents. Uh, oh, what'd you say? 78 cents. 78 cents. 60 cents. Dollar 10. Dollar 10. Mike, what's a single banana cost? Trader Joe's. Uh, 50 cents. 50 cents. Carmen? 89 cents. 19 cents. Oh, wow. wow. That's cheap. Yeah, they're raising it to twenty three cents, Sons which is bitches. only four cents, but it's a twenty one percent bump. So you get yeah. four bananas for a dollar. Not yeah. cool, Chiquita. I mean, that's a pretty good deal, I right? Think so. Everybody, you know, everybody guess way high. Don't give in to their, you know, this scheme of making us pay more for bananas, man. What are you, Mike Oliver? It's our right to have <laughs> bananas in nineteen cents, whatever. It was. I, lo- I love me a banana, but all right. Oh. I know an old lady. From the award-winning CD, here we go loop-de-loo by the Learning Station. Uh, Speaking of swallowing things, today is National Spinach Day. Oh, yeah, baby. Do you like spinach? Yeah, I do. Do you like spinach or do you like like, cream spinach? Yep. Oh, I love cream spinach, but I also love like steamed spinach with butter and garlic. Yeah. Yeah. But will you eat like a salad, spinach salad? Sometimes. I don't prefer spinach over like regular ice cream. Why did it make your teeth all slippery? I know, right? Uh. It's weird. It's weird. I, I Whatever like that spinach. enzyme is, yeah. I'll throw a little spinach on like a uh, uh, Mediterranean wrap oh, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Cucumbers and olives and some yeah. spinach Zuki over sauce. kale. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kale's Definitely. bitter. Kale's terrible. The only way I like kale is when I'd you I'd rather get swallow a horse. Soup is just kind Yeah, but even that, leave it out. Oh, it would like be it. better yeah. with it out. I like it. I like a leafy green in my soup. Ooh, yeah. I had Chewy. ramen the other night. <gasps> And yeah. I ate the egg, which I never do. Oh, the egg is some of the best. Shh, stop it. It's the best. It's gross. Egg gross. Uh, so Rebel Wilson has revealed that Sasha Baron Cohen is uh, the, quote, massive a-hole who has been trying to stop her from writing a book, uh, writing about him in her book. They worked together on the 2016 comedy, The Brothers Grimsby. Uh, and uh, he says that's BS. So she says that uh, she's writing about him. 
and he's trying to stop her from having the book come out because right. he's in it and makes him look like an a-hole. Did you see what it said? Or some of the things? Yeah, that, uh, for her to get naked. They were the the big scenes in the, the uh, Borat movie was when he would get naked, and so he kept. Uh, asking her to get naked in scenes that weren't in the script. He's like, Rebel, will you get naked for this? And she kept saying no. And then at one point, he was naked, and she and he tried to tell her to put his finger in her butt. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's oh, like, no. Rebel, put your finger in my butt. I just uh, I just think he's hilarious, and he'll do anything anything for a laugh. Yeah. I mean, him and that uh, Russian guy in the one movie where they're naked and his ass is in the yeah. space, that's some of the funniest stuff you'll ever see. It really is great. And, and she was a fat, yeah. you know, funny actress. So. Right, right. And he's trying to make a funny movie yeah. and, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, he's saying, no, check the receipts. He said everybody that he worked with thinks he's totally fine. People that were on the set. And she was saying nice stuff about him yeah. during interviews and stuff. So he's like, that's I mean, BS. Also, write your book and say he was an a-hole. Who cares? Yeah, that's yeah. your opinion of what happened when you were on the set. The guy said, hey, put your finger on my butt. And she said, no, what an a-hole this guy <laughs> is. I'm good with that. And I'm still not mad at him. Uh, the floating door that saved Kate Winslet in Titanic just sold at an auction for how much? I saw. How much are you uh, buying a floating door for? Sixty thousand dollars. That apparently can't fit two people on it. Yeah. Sixty grand. Sixty it's, grand. It's debris. <laughs> I'm going uh, at least a hundred grand. Hundred grand. Uh, I'll go seventy-five thousand. Carmen. Eighty. You guys are way low on your bids. Oh no. Seven hundred and eighteen thousand oh. seven hundred and fifty dollars oh. for the door yeah. that uh, Kate Winslet was on. Why? It was the highest selling item, followed by Harrison Ford's whip. In Temple oh, of Doom, I, oh, okay. I, I thought you meant his car for a second. Well, yeah. <laughs> that that went for five hundred and twenty-five million dollars, and then from Kingpin, uh, Bill Murray's Rose Bowling Ball. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that went for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow, that's crazy. Who's spending all this money on this stuff? <laughs> Rich weirdos. I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, any crazy movie movie memorabilia. I don't think. You know what I really would like, and Gio and I have talked about it, is the um, the de- the miniature Death Star that they used for filming the original Star Wars. That would be cool to have in the house. Yeah. I hang guess. it somewhere. Yeah, but you know what you can do? You can get a replica and you're say right. that's the real one. And, yeah. who's, you know. and when it falls to the ground, you're not set. Yeah. yeah. True. And, there, you don't, yeah. and you don't <laughs> spend a million dollars for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is Joe. there an item from a movie you'd really want? Like mm. Apollo Creed shorts. From when he got sure. killed, I don't want that. That's something <laughs> iconic to me. So my buddy Andy, who does all my framing and stuff, he's got his, like a memorabilia business, and he has a bunch of hoverboards from Back to the Future that's, too. That's pretty cool. Signed by the cast of Back to the Future. That's yeah, super he's cool. got he's got a lot of the DeLorean. He's got I, a lot I of think stuff. the only thing that would be like, oh, that's cool, but I wouldn't even really, you know, who cares? Whatever it would be like the rock hammer in the Bible from Shawshank. Sure. Yeah, it would oh, be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. but. Yeah. Also, what am I bringing that? Hey, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> you like that movie? I like that too. Huh? It made the hole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Gavin. What do you have? I got a rock here. <laughs> Dude, that was so time and pressure. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I mean, I, there are some iconic things. Like yeah. everybody always points to the ruby red slippers from Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. which I couldn't care less about. Yeah. But you hear every once in a while they got sold or stolen yeah. or whatever the case is. But yeah, I, I mean, there are certain things that I would like, like the Rocky shorts, like you said, the Apollo shorts, is some iconic stuff from The Godfather. I would like, but but I'm more on the page of Galvin right now. Where what are you gonna do with what you have? Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think I mean maybe if uh, you know, not even a movie thing. Well, it, it wasn't a movie, whatever. But like a, a kit that John Bonham played. You oh know, maybe a God. kit from Song Remains the <laughs> Same or something. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a cool showpiece sure. or, to have set up and be like, oh, this is awesome. I don't think I would play it. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you know, but uh, I don't know. I always when I was younger, I thought it would be cool to have Gene Wilder's hat from uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate cool. Factory. Yeah, that would be cool. Little top hat action. But again, you yeah. can get a top hat, put it in a glass case, <laughs> and type up a fake thing. Right, like, are you wearing it? Yeah. I would probably wear it, yeah. But I got I'm weird. Pete for his birthday one year, uh, an autograph slash top hat. Oh, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. He's a huge fan. Absolutely. Yeah, there's not really memorabilia stuff. I'm like, meh, yeah. whatever. I, I I collected so many guitars, I like to fill that space with more guitars, so I like that. But, yeah, I'm not really, uh, I stopped collecting baseballs and stuff i have everything i want Mm -hmm. i think you know and uh and i have my brady jersey and my mike evans jersey all i need is my sap jersey i have an all-star jersey yeah so i got room for my sap jersey and i'm done yeah that's pretty good that's it i was collecting uh pieces of buildings for a while i think i told you guys this yeah yeah like we went to rome and i got i I allegedly have a piece of the coliseum how'd you get that um just 
I may have just taken it out of the wall, taken it out of the wall. Took it, you took mm-hmm. it, took it, it around. I took, I took it. <laughs> uh, when we were in Ireland at the Jameson factory, I did take a piece of one of the uh, barrels that they have the thing. Uh, right? I just brought that home. I thought yeah. it was kind of cool. Hell yeah, I was like, yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. Smell it, everyone's yeah. home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I go to Galway's right. house and he goes. <laughs> 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 Uh, how about this? This is pretty cool. Uh, a bunch of different people getting together. Uh, Roger Daltrey, Robert Plant, Eddie Vedder all got together at a cancer benefit and uh, did the Who's Bob O'Reilly. Yeah. Doesn't sound as great as you think it would. We have some audio and uh, video on Bone TV. Here's just a little bit of it. It's up there, but uh, I, I don't know who the other people are on stage with them. But if you have Roger Daltrey, Robert Plant, Eddie Vedder, yeah. hey, other guys, right? Beat it, right? <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't immediately know who you are, <laughs> move to the side. Galvin and I were on stage with <laughs> Brian Johnson, Greg Billings, the tiny guy. What was his name? Joe Lynn Turner. Joe Lynn Turner, and uh, somebody else. Eddie the, Money. Eddie Money at the yeah. John Entwistle Foundation. And we were like, we're not going. They were like, go ahead, go out there. And we were like, no, we're not going out there. And then finally, we we're like, you're never going to get a chance to sing with Eddie Money and Brian Johnson again. So we went out there. With That's it. pretty cool. And we went out and That's sang cool. on the same microphone with Eddie Money. And Eddie Money singing, and then he kind of goes, <laughs> who are, who are, who are <laughs> you guys? <laughs> What's going on? He actually said, who are you, F heads? Yeah. 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 Did you go, <laughs> is he Eddie Money? He used to be a cop in Chicago. <laughs> Uh, and then finally in news on ranker.com, people are voting on what comedies they think are the best of all time. Oh. Save it. It's going to make save you so mad, right? Save it. Save it. Save it. We'll do it when we come back from break. Uh, so I have the top 20 here. I will tell you that a lot of them are older, okay. you know, so it's all time. So you can be anywhere in there, but they're all ones we've heard of. Why okay. are you trying to upset us so early in the morning? <laughs> I love lists that are just terrible. <laughs> the, the, um, what was it? Uh, Rolling Stone best guitarist that makes oh. me mad every yeah. time they put it out. It's ridiculous. It's trash. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what we'll t- I, I will tell you though, like I apologize. I have apologized for many things on this show because I I know I'm not always right, and sometimes I speak you know off the top of my head. ELO, I was dead set against him being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was convinced Bare Naked Ladies had one song that is wrong. I listened to Bare Naked Ladies for a whole day, and I went, you know what? They have a lot more songs than I thought. I was wrong. ELO, great band. Yeah. Tons of songs, tons of production yeah. stuff that they did that nobody else was doing. I was wrong, but I still hold strong that uh, finally I figured <laughs> out Sister Hazel has <laughs> one song. One song. Yeah. One song. Doesn't mean it's that, a great song. Doesn't mean you're not going to go see them live or there's anything bad about them, but they really only had one song. Yeah. <laughs> now you're going to make me, it's going to be stuck in my head all day now. Finally I figured I out. Figure out. I don't know the next line. No, 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 no. I don't want to know. Long, long time. Did you know that song? No. It's a white people song. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand. Yeah. I forced uh, him to listen to white people music over the weekend. Uh, what do you mean? What are you listening to? Some depressing music. Yeah. That, that was on accident. Like... That was just a playlist of hippie sabotage. But then I made him listen oh. to some rock that I like. That, hippie uh... sabotage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was what? more the rock stuff. There what was... is the rock stuff? It's Polyphia that you've made fun of me before. Oh, too and then many this, notes. This other band called Intervals, yeah, that I really like. Don't yeah. call that rock. But yeah. Pol- I guess it's like pro- prog rock. They're Listen like, up. look at how much we can play and yes. how good we Let's are. Music. Every- they're, listen, they're unbelievable. They the guitar player is ridiculous. Do you like, um, oh, what is the name of the band? Damn it. Now I can't think of it. Uh, where they're all dressed, you don't know who they are. Like their drummer is two. Oh, and the one. Blue Band Group. No, no, no. I do know what band you're talking about, but I don't think I've ever heard any of their you music. Mean, like, they're coming through. No, no, they're coming like through. Yeah. Uh, they did. The Polyphia, have you heard the song that they did with Steve Vai? It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Really yeah, good. Yeah, that's just seems like it's all Frank Zappa stuff without Frank Zappa. Kinda, yeah, yeah. But they they have a little more hip hop influence that I like. What is also it P O L Y P H I A. They're unbelievable musicians, yeah. but uh it's just, you know It's a lot. You just fill Sleep every token. space. Every Sleep space. Sleep token sound. is the band that I'm talking about. I have heard of them, but I've never listened to their music. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check it you out seem now. Like all right, I'm gonna down. write this down. Sleep token, all one word? Mm, no. Sleep token. Okay, thank you. Uh, and they're drummers too. He was on Drumio and he was like, 
I am too. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So he talks like Optimus Prime, and they have, <laughs> yeah. they're all covered with masks, so you can't see anything. I am it's just too. all in black. I am too. Yeah. It's a great idea to you book a gig in Tampa. Yeah. In the summer. It's hot. Yeah. Sweating your face off it. I'm sorry. Spell it again. P O L Y P H I A. Polyphia? Polyphia, yeah. This Spotify thing. Oh, I'm probably sorry, best, probably best, Michael. It's yeah. Best. Don't, it's please don't. Best. I did yeah. not please enjoy don't. myself. Oh my god! <laughs> I got. By the time I got home, I was I, I was in a bad mood. <laughs> yeah. No, that's just because you're anxious in general. No, yeah, no that's because this music sucks. When yeah, he picked me up, that's what it means. He played <laughs> hip hop and like reggae. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's, no, all right, that's he's cool. pandering to me. Yeah. Then it was just the opposite yeah. of music. I had to loosen you up a little bit. It's not music. It's just a lot of noise. That's all it is. And I hate that he would nod his head to the music. Oh, yeah. oh my God. There's, yeah. no, oh. there's nothing. Yeah. yeah, there is. Garbage. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I had to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop. Believe it. Yeah, see, everybody sings. Everybody sings along. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is. I mean, there's, 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 Sixteen uh, over four. Dude, I will never not see that face anytime I listen to that. <laughs> What's next? That is crazy. That's All right, too much. we'll take a break. We come back. The what is it count? What's the list? It is the greatest comedy uh, movies of all time. Oh, this is gonna make us all mad. Yeah. All right, we'll do that next. It's the Mike Calton Show. This is 1025 The Bone. I respect Drew, and we're just different human beings. I was just reading a post that Drew Drew wrote. I'm going to be honest. I don't want anybody, most people, to lose their jobs in radio. It's a tough job to get. I've been fired a bunch of times. It sucks, and it sucks when you get fired from any job. When you get fired from radio, you have to wonder if you're ever going to work in radio again, and that really is hard. And uh, I guess Clear Channel laid off a bunch of people yesterday, and Drew wrote about it on his Facebook post, and then he wrote about it again today. And uh, he attached something from ten years ago about a meeting that he had with Shark. But it was, but it's this line that gets me. Shark told me about a potential opportunity to host a morning show at an alternative rock station in Tampa. He's still a bit fragile and skeptical about radio. Due to I was like, oh come on, fragile and skeptical. <laughs> this is, that's what he, I'm surprised you don't work on his show. <laughs> Listen, emotions are real. People experience them. Uh, you know how others express them is their deal. I'll take this as a negative on me that Drew seems to be a lot more in touch with his emotions. Than You're I in am. touch with your emotions. Yeah, but my emotions come in anger and rage. Well, they don't come in fragile and, and quiet. That would be a sign that you have some things to work through. <laughs> Why? Why is yours better than mine? Uh, I didn't say that. That you I, do. No, I no. don't think I have anything to work through. So that would be, I would point to you that just that sentence says a lot about you because you're you're assuming that I'm saying it's better or not. I don't believe there is such a thing as better or not. Yours is yours uh, and mine is mine. Do That's you think Drew what? has issues to work through? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to. Yeah, but I you're based so. on what he wrote. I didn't read it. I'm just Can't going just off what you read. You. No, you 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 read like a synopsis. That's of what it. I'm saying. Just that part. Two things. One, I don't believe in there's better. That's what losers say. Also, uh, I'm talking about emotions, uh, not, midnight, not competition. Midnight run. You have two emotions: silence and, and rage. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, silence and rage. Yeah. Yeah. So silence good. and rage. I love that. <laughs> I, I fit that very well. I'm either very mad or very quiet. Most yeah. of the time, I'm quiet. Yeah. My wife and I were discussing some stuff yesterday, and I went, oh, yeah, yeah. And she goes, I don't know how you do it. I go, I, I am maybe because I'm a little older than you. I go, I don't let these dumb things bother me, mm-hmm. especially if they could be easily fixed or ignored. You know, if it's yeah. something that doesn't matter, just ignore it. It doesn't have nothing to do with us. Uh, I said, I am a big believer in it'll work out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I figure stuff out. Like, mm-hmm. if there's a problem, I can solve it and do this, whatever. But a lot of times there's stuff that's completely out of your control. And I go, eh, yeah. it'll work out. Absolutely. That's how I, that's how I feel. Yeah, or, that's a good way to be. Yeah, uh, I'm very chill. I'm very relaxed. So she's not. She's very tense about it. Yeah, everything. that's, you yeah. know. Whatever. But you worrying about stuff that you're not going to affect at all, all that's doing is just making you worry and 100%. making you stress and do yeah. all that stuff. And you're like, mm, well. Too much negativity. Yeah. Although I am worried every time I drive over a bridge now. Yeah. If I oh, see well, a boat in the water, I'm not going through. Don't manifest that it, thing is, Look at it. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, dude, I can't believe that it's, happened. They got the whole bridge. Yeah, they did. Do you think the guy that was in charge of oh, building bro. that bridge saw that and was like, come oh, on. Oh, <laughs> it took me <laughs> forever. Dude. We yeah. just painted it. Yeah. 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 I imagine the guy driving the boat was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That guy was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think he's. A, <laughs> I mean, I saw it going to the to the pylon for 
five minutes yeah, before man. it hit. It was crazy. I mean, all the, that's the way they should demolish bridges now. You just hit one spot and all the... Oh, bing, 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 bing. That would be awesome. Right you know, like the first man was like... Uh, there's no way he's going to hit that. Right? <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, yeah anyway, but, no way. Uh, all right, got one back to the list. Uh, so Ranker.com, uh, people are voting on what comedies they think are the best of all time. Okay, so comedy movies, best of all time. I have the top 20 here. Obviously, this is subjective, so, you know, but they have a bunch of people voting. So what do you think? When you think of a great comedy movie, what's the first one that comes to mind? Midnight Run. Midnight Run, fantastic, not on the list. Step Brothers. Yeah. Step Brothers, Carmen, I agree with you. Fantastic as well. Not on the oh, list. Oh, grow your list yeah. with. Beverly Light. Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. Didn't hold up. Not funny. Not on what? the list. Life uh, with Eddie Murphy. No. Great movie. Caddyshack. Good one. Yeah. Caddyshack is number 10. Go. Caddyshack came out in 1980, is number 10, so it's right in the middle of this list. So Super bad. think of higher or lower. Super bad, great, not on the list. Forty year old virgin, not on the list. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore that uh, they just announced they're going to be making a number two. Uh, it comes in at fifteen. Nice. Nineteen ninety six. Animal House. Animal House is. I believe I saw it here somewhere. Hang on. Uh, it is. Finally, I figured out. <laughs> Number 20. Comes okay. in at 20. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, not on the list. Old school. Old school, great, not on the list. Oh, uh, Friday. Uh, no, not on the list. Racist. Duck Soup. No, Marx <laughs> Brothers, not on the list. Is there any Judd Apatow movies? No. Oh. Really? That's crazy to me. Uh, like I said before, there are a lot of older ones that are on here. Uh, some newer ones, you know, some from like 2004, I see one. Uh, there's um, a lot of 80s, some 70s. You're telling me a movie list of the funniest movies of all time and a movie from 2024 is on this list? 2004, not oh, 2024. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Spaceballs. Spaceballs comes in at number 14, 1987. Uh, Blazing Saddles. Blazing oh. Saddles, uh. 1974. Number one. Yeah. Oh, number one. So good. Listen, when Blazing Saddles came out, <laughs> it was great. Right. But it doesn't hold up. And it's been out and you know it. And so it doesn't seem that big. But I guess you have to go back to when it first came out. Yeah. How great it was. Because that was. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, uh, gross humor. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of racist stuff. There was a lot of this and that that people loved and thought was really funny. I shouldn't say racist. I should say race. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny race yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, you yeah. know like, how I love all the racist <laughs> jokes. <laughs> uh, uh, History of the World Part 1? Uh, no, that is not in here. Uh, I, Bob Murray weighing in. Hangover. Oh. Hangover. Not in oh. here. Rat not race. in the top 20. Is yeah. that unbelievable? So, uh, number 20 uh, you got was Animal House. Number 19. Shaun of the Dead. Oh, that's oh, such a good movie. Yeah. That's very funny. That's Just very funny. How's that movie. for a slice of fried gold? Yep. Uh, <laughs> number 18, The Blues Brothers. Oh, nah. uh, that was the one I keep forgetting. Nah. I love The Blues Brothers. Really? And here's the other thing that I always say when we talk about Blues Brothers. The pitch meeting on that. Yeah. There's two white brothers who look nothing alike. They're adopted, <laughs> and then they have to... Uh, go through this whole thing mm -hmm. to raise money for their orphanage mission from god and they're a band and they don't and they have to go get the other band but like who who says that's a yeah. great idea for a movie do you see the uh clip i put out the other day on instagram it's the uh, blues brothers and they're standing there you know whenever that starts ba ba da ba and they're yeah. dancing whatever but they replaced it with hot for teacher and it goes ba ba da ba 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 <laughs> and they're dancing and it matches up perfectly it's awesome i love blues brothers i think that's one of the greatest comedies they wrecked the most cop cars in any yeah. movie up until that point we've yep. got cop tires yep. cop shocks <laughs> uh, Come on. number 17 is great and i watched this movie so many times that to this day i could probably just uh, do every line in the movie as ferris it goes bueller. ferris bueller's oh, yeah, day off that is good uh, ferris bueller's day off is great uh number also six another one i think doesn't hold up Really? Yeah, I don't. I watched it. I watched it, I, but I watched it over Christmas. I thought it, it was great. Me. So. <laughs> well, but the, here's the thing about it: it really changed the way comedies were made because it became that character who was cool and had everything figured out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that—that was the first one out there that you were like, "Oh wow, this is mm -hmm. crazy." This kid's, you know, just everything works out for him. 
Uh, this one, number 16, is one that we talked about the other day because oh. it had one of those long-awaited sequels that oh. didn't Coming work to out. America? Coming to America. Oh, 1988 yeah. comes into number That's 16. A great one. Yeah. Uh, Carmen, you got Happy Gilmore, number 15. Uh, Spaceballs, we said, number 14. Uh, another movie with space in it, but a different kind of space. Number 13 is... Oh, uh, why do I feel like I know this? Michael Bolton. Oh, Office Space. Office oh, yeah. Space. <laughs> Office Space is great. I love that movie. Uh, then you have uh, number uh, 12 is uh, The Naked Gun from oh, the yeah. Files of Police Squad. It came out in 1988. A uh, movie that Mike Kelta claims he has never seen, but Smokey is a the great movie. Not Smokey and the Bandit. Oh. The Goonies. Think about Thanksgiving. Oh. I love Goonies. Uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Planes, yeah. Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah. I have Martin. the only part I know is a part of those aren't pillows. That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> John Candy. It's a great, great movie. Yeah, it is. Uh, number 10 we got was Caddyshack. Number 9 is another Mel Brooks movie. Mel Brooks is all over this list. Fr- the the Frankenstein movie. Young Frankenstein. Yeah. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 8 is My Cousin Vinny. Oh, oh I do yeah. like that movie. It's great. Uh, number seven, you cannot go wrong with this. My in-laws watch this. I don't know why, but for every, uh, well, I do know why. I mean, obviously it makes sense, whatever, but uh, every Christmas we watch it. Um, National Lampoon's? Vacation. Yeah. 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 Which is great. We, Christmas vacation, obviously. It's Tommy yeah, Chris- Boy on that list. Uh, Tommy Boy not on the list. Christmas Vacation is the is a really funny mm-hmm. version of that movie. Uh, Christmas Vacation comes in at number two. It, it is good. Yeah, it is fantastic for sure. Uh, we are up to uh, number six. Number six is a guy who was in another movie that's on this list. Uh, very famous comedian. A lot of eighties movies that did very well. Trading Places. Trading Places comes in at number uh, number six uh, from nineteen eighty three. Number five is. The Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. Right. Which is great. Uh, right. you, you are not going to like number four. I don't think you're going to like number four. I like four. The Princess Bride, but I don't know if I'm necessarily putting that in comedy. And oh, if I sure. Am, yeah, but it's like, I don't know. Maybe not the greatest, one of the greatest comedies of all time. Yeah. Uh, number four. Want to buy a peanut. <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Ah. Not funny. Comes in number four. Number three. This one really changed movies from 1980 and a lot of uh, uh, sequels and different stuff and different movies that offshoot from this from the creators of this number three any guesses breakfast club no so movie that spoke out other movies uh slapstick goofy puns is it a three stooges movie no it's not oh airplane Airplane. Oh, okay. uh, 1980 Airplane like comes in movies. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number two <laughs> is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And number one, according to Ranker.com, the funniest comedy movie of all time, Blazing Saddles. Yeah. I would uh, I would disagree with that, although that list is better than I thought it was going to be. If we, I mean, it's hard for you to name the funniest movie of all time. Uh, Step Brothers is great. I know yeah. Carmen loves it. Yeah. I will tell you the movie that made me laugh harder than any movie and it made me cry and I thought I was going to run out of breath because I was laughing so hard was Kung Pao Enter the oh, Fest. Oh man, that is a great movie. <laughs> it was <laughs> the so yeah. great. Yeah. It was so good. The first time I saw it, yeah. I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't even believe it. You know what else was really good is Foot Fist Way. Foot Fist Way is good, but <laughs> that's kind of dark. weird. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's weird because I remember reading an article about that and Will Ferrell was a producer on there and this new guy, uh, Danny McBride and stuff, and I watched it and I was like, yeah, this is great, but a lot of people aren't going <laughs> to like this. Yeah, I, I have to say I love Midnight Run. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Midnight Run is a funny movie that I could watch anytime mm-hmm. and laugh at it like I've never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. They're so funny together. Charles Grodin is so good. So good. so worn down by by Robert De Niro. <laughs> I have an idea. Why don't you stop the car and I'll get it yeah, and run yeah. over? Uh, I love so when fun. he pushes him off the train. See you in the next life, Jack. Yeah, yeah and then man. he gets up and he climbs over and comes back and he goes, "Good to see me. <laughs> Must be the next life, huh?" <laughs> oh, just so it's angry the entire movie. time. Oh yeah. my god, you can't put me in here. There's no air in here. <laughs> it's it, there's just every line, every facial tick is just uh, so funny in that movie. Mm. <laughs> I would say that's my favorite. One of my favorite movies, but definitely my favorite comedy. Yeah. But I do like The Hangover. I do love old school, but those are more like in your face. Here's some comedy. Laugh at it, stupid. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Galvin, for your list. Yeah, um, you got it. Do you remember when I came in here and I said I watched the Vladimir Putin, Oliver Stone interviews, and <laughs> yes. Putin seemed like a pretty cool guy? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then they raided, invaded Ukraine. Everybody yeah. was like, Kai Kami, you're the worst <laughs> ever. Sympathizer. 
I'm back on the Putin train. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Oh. So there was a uh, a terrorist attack where ISIS claimed that they were responsible that happened in Russia at a concert over mm-hmm. the weekend. You're familiar with that? Yes. Then uh, they got the suspects. Have you seen them? Yes, I did. Have you? No. They bring the suspects out into court yesterday. One guy's nose over here. Mm-hmm. One guy's eye blown up like their whole. I mean, mm-hmm. they beat the crap out. Did of Did you see them. what else they did to him? No. They also hooked them up to car batteries and oh, were torturing them. Yeah. 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 That's what you do. Yeah, hundred percent. That's how you stop it in the future. Yeah. You you you'd make a guy you let a guy live to go tell people that they hooked up a car battery <laughs> to your balls. Yeah, man. That's what you do. That's Russia, baby. Oof. I was like, now this is when I saw their faces all swollen because those are fresh bruises. I thought that's good. That's mm-hmm. the way you teach a good lesson. Do Although you, they're still saying it's an inside job. Oh, yeah. Do you remember when Cops was the hugest show? It was the biggest show yeah. ever, whatever, and they went over to Russia. They did Cops in Russia. <laughs> do you do remember re- that? I yeah. do. I saw it on they, YouTube. They did Cops in Russia. <laughs> And they have different rules over there. The yeah. cops would kick doors in and just start kicking people in the face. And they're like, hey, guys, we're filming this. We're filming this. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. Just He's wait. Russia. Yeah. I mean, it was wild. Oh, dude. Yeah, dude. They really beat the hell out of those guys. Yeah. No? I, I, the, my favorite cops in Russia is they were doing a traffic stop. And the Russian cop, I mean, looked so calm and nonchalant. And the guy rolled down his window and said and something angry, and he just reached in, pulled him out of the car, and just started stomping his face. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I watch all those videos now of police stops, and I, I'm pretty respectful for the police, but I like to see what these guys do and what the law is, you know, what they have to say and what they don't have to say. And they're all pretty they're all pretty stiff with the cops, and the cops, because they're on camera, are like, okay, sir, I understand, but mm-hmm. I know those cameras weren't rolling. There'd be so oh, many, yeah. so many uh, <laughs> nightclubs to the head. Uh, uh, there is a video and it seems like it's probably set up, but uh, there is a, uh, like a black suburban that cuts his car off and the car gets up next to it and stuff at a stoplight. And he's like uh, doing all this stuff to the, to the car. Cause it's got blacked out windows. Right. The windows come down and it's just like eight guys in there with ski mask. Uh, on. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy's like, sorry, <laughs> just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> the other thing, the other good video that's been around for a while in Russia is when the one guy, the two cars are driving, and one guy is riding the other guy's ass, and the passenger's like, I got it. And he points a machine gun out the window, and the other guy just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a break. When we come back, it's not over. We got more to talk about. All right. We, we talked about the um, Quiet on the Set documentary about Hollywood kids getting raped. Well, yeah. there's, a, there's a new story with a rapist and a victim, and you know them both very well. Oh. We'll tell you who that is when we come back. It's Mike Cal to show this is 1025 The Bone. Uh, I'm going to play this for you, and then we can talk about it. Um, that's Creed, or whatever his name is. He's got Stapp. This is, uh, I don't know what this is from, but this is a clip of Corey Feldman talking about Corey Haim and the sex abuse that he went through at the hands of one Charlie Sheen. Bolted Corey Haim when Sheen was 19 and Haim was 13. Sheen's publicist tells people in a statement, quote, these sick, twisted, and outlandish allegations never occurred, period. The statement then adds, quote, I would urge everyone to consider the source and read what his mother, Judy Haim, has to say. So follow along here. It was in Feldman's new documentary, My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys, which premiered in LA on Monday, that Feldman alleged Haim told him that Charlie Sheen raped him on the set of the 1986 film, Lucas. In the doc, Feldman re- re- uh, reflects on that conversation with Haim, saying, quote, this wasn't like a one-time thing that he said in passing. It wasn't like, oh, by the way, this happened. He went into great detail. According to Entertainment Weekly, there were also several other people from the documentary who claimed that Haim had told them of the alleged abuse as well, one of those people being Feldman's ex-wife, Susanna. In a 2017 National Enquirer report, actor Dominic Brasha made a similar accusation about Sheen, which Sheen denied. According to Rolling Stone, a 2017 clip from The Dr. Oz Show was featured in the Feldman documentary. In the clip, Haim's mother alleges that it wasn't Sheen who sexually abused her son, but Brasha. Feldman also accuses Brasha of abusing Haim in the documentary. And in the past, Brasha denied that allegation, telling Perez Hilton in 2016, quote, it's totally not true. A lot to that to unpack. We'll keep you posted as we find out more. Now, uh, is anybody surprised? Oh, that's odd. Uh, that Charlie Sheen 
No. Is involved in something like no, this. No, not even no, a little bit. Not at all. And to go back to saying about these people that we think are crazy and then we mm-hmm. find out terrible stuff happened to him. Yeah. Corey Feldman is one of those guys. Yeah. But uh, in the clip, did you see the, the actual clip? Of the rape? Uh, no, oh. not of the rape. <laughs> oh. Of Corey Feldman talking about this and the different people that are on the movie set talking no, about no. it? No, no. I've heard other people. I saw clips of other people say that Corey Haim did tell them it was Charlie Sheen. And then the details he went into about it. Did you hear the details? Crisco? Crisco, yeah. that he grabbed them in between two trailers, crisco up his BH. People walking by. And yeah. raped them there while people were walking by. I don't know if they, they necessarily saw well, it. could or, be walking by. Right. Uh, but almost out in the open. And he said to him, this is what you do. This is how they do it in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Jesus, I, I mean, which leads me to believe that him coming from a Hollywood family, maybe yeah. something that happened to him when he was a young age. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. And that's why he's doing all the drugs and yeah. doing all the tiger blood oh, and everything oh, else he was doing. Who knows what happened to Britney Spears? Because she has. Well, really, that's another one that yeah. we've talked about. You know, she is out of her mind, and uh, the conservatorship. You know, it, it was it good for her because who? What was her father mm-hmm. was in charge, and her father seems like a lunatic. And you know, I don't does he know? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, but what if he, he was just trying to protect her? Yeah, but it seems like he was forcing her to do the different stuff and uh, to make money for the family. But and what if making that's... her take birth control so she couldn't get pregnant? Yeah, but, yeah listen, because she's have... nuts. But Liz, but what she if... wasn't. But... but she's not capable of having a baby. She is though. Oh, she I'm has sorry, two that... sons. Right. I'm sorry. She's not f- capable of taking care of another human. But she is, and she was. They were drugging her and forcing her. Well, what are they to doing work? now? The, the same thing. They are drugging her and forcing her to what just if, stay in the house. What if that's the deal you make when you sign up to get famous as a kid? Maybe she didn't make that deal. Maybe the parents made the deal and they tell you, all right, we're in control of your life now. You got to do what we tell yeah, you. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll go back to even say that uh, I'm starting to believe Carmen that that's not even real Britney Spears. Might not yeah. be. Yeah. I, don't I, don't know think it is. I don't know what's going on with the teeth. How are the teeth so weird? Because she's got <laughs> meth mouth. But that doesn't space not her. them. That doesn't yeah. space yeah. them. She has like spaces in her teeth. She now. could have had veneers, and when the veneers are removed, she's got little baby chicklets. Yeah, but what? She had veneers since she was sixteen. Um, possibly. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because they, they have to shave your teeth down to put veneers right. on. Right. That's just she has little yeah. baby chiclet teeth, right? Yeah. But they're spaced. Is the problem? Well, yeah, because they, if you shave them down. Yeah. There's the width them. will go yeah. down yeah. equally. Yeah, because they got to cap them, and it's a very in, I don't incredible know. thing. Uh, that I they mean, do. Uh, whoever that is, if that's her, she's out of her mind, and I don't even think it's her fault. Yeah. I don't think she ever had a chance. I think right. if uh, you're that young and become that famous, and who knows what's going on with the family, the family doesn't seem great. It's it just all about that stuff. Just seems. I'm weird. telling you, you sign a deal. They say they sign a deal with the devil. It's not the real devil. It's these companies and the executives who they control your life. You sign that deal. Now you're going to do X amount of albums. You have to do this. You're only allowed to have two kids. You're going to get married to who we tell you to. You're going to live your life the way we tell you to. And if you speak up, we're going to make you seem crazy and ruin your life. It's kind of like uh, joining a fraternity. They're yeah. like, uh, it's going to be great. We're going to have parties and do all this yeah. stuff. And then as soon as you become a pledge, they're like, get out of here. <laughs> start yelling at you. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I don't know. I think there's delusion there on both ends. I think I think you get in there and it's not what you expected. And then people string you along, and you're like, all right, well, if that's what I have to do. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where all this weird. That's rapey what I'm stuff saying. It's like more and more people are coming out and they're talking about exactly what I'm saying. Where it's the kids are not making the deal. The parents are making the deal, and then once they sign. The kid now belongs to these companies, yeah. and that's just the way it is. And when the kid tries to speak out, they're made to look crazy, insane, like they got a drug problem. Like what they, they say, put Scientology jail. does mm-hmm. to people. Yeah, you Have know you what I mean? Have you guys ever watched the show The Boys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of yeah. like that. Vought talks to the parents, they get them settled, and then the kids don't know anything, right? Yeah. yeah. They get made to look crazy if they speak out. Yeah. But that's the thing is, you know, you for the longest time, I went, oh, man, so-and-so's crazy, or this person's crazy. Then you start to see the background of how they came up, and you go, yeah. oh, they never had a chance. They're actually the victim yeah. of stuff. And it's so wild. Amanda Bynes turned down the... Um the new documentary that's out, The Quiet on the Set. Yeah. I would give anything to see her do a, an interview, talk oh, about she's stuff. She's insane, though. Yeah. She has, like, a weird heart face tattoo. Yeah, well, and she those wants to eyebrows be- that she oh, has. Yeah. Yeah. On she's been through a lot. <laughs> she looks like she's an ICP. Yeah, oh, that would be awesome <laughs> if she was. <laughs>
I feel I I feel nothing more than uh, bad for Britney Spears when I see her on. on of Instagram course, yeah. I feel bad for all of a sudden now. I'm glad I didn't want to be a celebrity when I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to be a rock star. Now I'm hearing all these stories. And I'm like, damn, man, that would have been horrendous. Very few people go through Hollywood and they come out the other end without ever having. Yeah. That. Every every major celebrity has had one breakdown or something. And the level of breakdown really is probably all the same. And some of it may, may not even be too bad, but because they're famous, it sounds mm. worse. You know, mm. didn't Jim Carrey break down too? No, they made him, they want, they made him seem like he was crazy because he went, he fell into like some crazy spirituality stuff. And then yeah. was talking on the red carpet about how nothing was real, yeah. but he didn't mean in reality, nothing real. He was, he meant like the systems of the red carpet isn't real and doesn't mean anything. It's all garbage fluff that people do and buy into. And I think Jim Carrey is a very creative, odd guy oh, yeah. that goes into his comedy and stuff, but he's also comes across. He, I think he sometimes wants to come across as like crazy. a weird Jim Morrison, yeah, you know, oh, for kinda, sure. that type of stuff. But also he was one of the ones that uh, immediately uh, when Will Smith uh, smack Chris Rock was like, it's not right. And people let him stay there and yeah. they applauded him. He goes, this is insane. Like, this is what Hollywood is. Assaulted yeah. somebody. Yeah. yeah. I, I think people were confused. Nah. They, they were. Yeah. I think people were like, did that just happen? Our, was it real? No and, way, Chris, man. Why is Chris Rock being so calm? Nah. I yeah, thought it was a bit I, at first. I would have to think that Chris Rock was back there going, it was real. Yeah. Like, my yeah. Face, you know? uh, who Chris Rock cried. say? Chris Rock said, um, oh, he, he said, you know, on that special he did with... Uh, with Kevin Hart, he said, right after it happened, I go backstage, and who's the first person to call me? Dave Chappelle. And he goes, and I answer the phone, and I said, you were the only N-word I would answer the phone for at this time, calling me to find mm. out what just happened. And he said, yes, it was real. Yes, it hurt. Yeah. That's, those are the two, two takeaways. Crazy. Oh, man. Hollywood is nuts. These nuts. Yeah. Yeah, it's breaking down. I have to go there. Will I call Jay Moore? No. No. No, not. go go with them to a meeting. Uh, no, why not? Go with them to that restaurant. Enjoy it. I'm not yeah. part of that. Yeah, you don't have to be part of it to go. You can just show your support. No, I could just pop into a meeting. Yeah, you know, Bobby won't tell me who's in this meeting. That's because he's a good person. <laughs> he's not supposed to. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm gonna be very honest with you about something. If you tell me, don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include my wife or my girlfriend. Okay, point. that's fair. So if you tell me something at night when I'm in bed, I may say to my wife, you're not going to believe who did this. I have to tell her. Okay. Or my girlfriend, I'll call Pete and be like, did you know this? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So Pete, me, Pete hit me with some news yesterday. He just texts me, oh boy. And I go, oh God, tell <laughs> oh, me I'm dying yeah. to know, I'm dying to know. And then he didn't immediately respond to me, so I called him 50 times. So like, <laughs> he's like, why? I go, you can't tease me like that. Yeah. I got to know. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. And if you're a girl and you send me nudes, I keep that private. <laughs> except maybe Pete takes a shot at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because he he shows me everything, so yeah. I show him. But they don't. I don't say, "Hey, this is this girl." I just mm -hmm. show it to him, you know. But that's it. Other than that, I'm pretty solid. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why you got something? I mean, I talked a little bit about something yesterday. I threw a blind item out there, and yeah. my phone is blowing up. Oh, I bet everybody called me. People were calling the people that call. I was like, listen, I don't know why. I saw something that made me talk about it, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I'm i not ta I'm not going to be that guy. Smart. Yeah, yeah. It's none of my business. Mm -hmm. It's just although I have it in my heart, and it's, it makes me a butterfly. Literally, <laughs> literally doing what Pete did to you. And you called him 50 times. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it bugs me. Oh, man. Uh, it, did you watch the uh, West Wing? Did you watch the whole thing or I no? I did not. I it's know a, about it, but I did not. It's a great show, but you were talking about the uh, anonymous stuff. Uh, on there, uh, the vice president is an alcoholic and uh, a former alcoholic. And uh, the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, what is the uh, chief of staff yeah. is an alcoholic as well. Uh -oh. And he tells him to come to his meeting and he goes, you have meetings? He goes, like, you, you can't, you know, people are going to find out about that. And he goes, no, we do it. He goes, it's a poker party. He yeah. goes, we have security out the front door. He goes, it's a bunch of senators and us. And he goes, nobody knows. Yeah. And that's our meeting. Well, thought, oh, right, that's pretty yeah. clever. That was my whole point about telling you about the Snapchat thing and all that stuff is that uh, Bobby and I will be alone. I'll be like, tell me, tell me who's in your Not meeting. cool. No, but sometimes he'll say a name and he'll go, or he'll be he'll be on, we'll be Zooming, talking, mm -hmm. FaceTiming, and he'll be on a Zoom meeting and he'll take the phone and he'll go like this and he'll show it to me really quick. And then one time I, I said a name. I go, is that Joe McHale? He goes, what? 
I gotta go and I go, I, I can't tell if it's being real or not. But I'm dying to know who's in there. He said it's all famous people. Uh, I bet, yeah. You know who should definitely have a meeting or go into some sort of rehab? People that keep on using Joel McHale in TV shows. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> like, it, oh, it's not dude. working. It's, you know, 58 <laughs> different TV shows that have failed. It's Stop it. Stop who, using him. I don't even think I know who that is. Yeah, you do. Joel he, McHale, he wound up taking over Talk Soup. Like, oh, at the okay. End Talk Soup guy? Community yeah. guy? Okay. Community, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Community now. Him. Joel, imagine being his agent. Hey, Joel. Yeah. We got a script for you. Yeah. All right. It's network television. Oh, great. That's the money. And uh, you're going to play an exterminator who goes after animals. <laughs> yeah. and gets, uh, you're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> that would make me insane. Uh, let me grab some phone calls. 727-579-1025. Mike, count the show. Good morning. Hey, is uh, Mike there? Yeah, I'm here. Right here. How you doing, sir? Dude, you got to go to the meeting, man. It'll be great, and you gotta make sure you're there on time. Part of the preamble is whatever, whatever is said here stays here, and everybody goes here, here. Yeah, but I, how do I just go into a meeting? I don't have an alcohol or a drug problem or anything. Well, you you sit there and you listen. It's fine. They're gonna think you're a newcomer, man. They're gonna tear you up. They're gonna love it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean they can tear me up? I don't mind ad libbing with people who are like Mike. Tell us a little about your problem. I'll make up problems. I'll just start lying about stuff. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, just, nah, just go there for support, man. But yeah, they'll think you're a newcomer. They'll surround you. Someone's going to hand you the big book, all that stuff. It's going to be great. I don't want any of it. All right, thank It'll you. It'll be great, is yeah. what this guy's saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want the big book. I don't want the. Uh, yeah. The holy cannoli, I don't want none of it. Oh, no, he knows. Want, he want, knows what yeah. you like, and you're going to love it. You need a good holy cannoli, man. <laughs> Although I do enjoy talking. You knew you would love it. Well, I just would rather do it you here wanna, where I get paid a lot for You want to go to the disc- discussion group. Discussion group, then. You don't want to go to the steps. Uh, Dizzy and I were discussing the uh, new season of Curb that's on, and that was one of the things Richard Lewis at his uh, meetings, whatever, he goes, I'm killing. He goes, I'm doing some of the best material I've ever done. And then they were talking about him doing a uh, special, like uh, where it's from the uh, meeting and stuff. Jokes yeah. from the meeting? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty funny. I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I've never been in any of those sort of things. And good for you. Except when I was a kid, and they did. My mother tried to go to this, take us to this weird church, <laughs> and they made us go around the room and tell stuff. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I've been down that what path, Michael. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I've been down that path. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. The weird church. Yeah. 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 What, what they, they make you stuff? do? Yeah. 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 They're just very. You know, they're very. Uh, it's all about mind control. They. They. They're. they're con- everybody's constantly watching everybody else, and they're trying to influence you. And I did not like it. I found it was they were trying to get inside your head. <laughs> I remember vividly being in fourth grade, 10 years old, maybe it was 11 years old, but right around that time, my mother took us to this church, it's like Baptist church, and we went to the kids program, so I'm in the kids thing, and they're going around the room, they're talking about this, and they start bringing up that, um, if you love God, you can't play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, it's oh, the God. devil. What? Pass. Yeah. And I raised oh. my hand, I was like, it's just a game, yeah. and they were like. Ooh. It's not just and it's a game where they teach you to worship. You're inviting gods Satan. And that, yeah, you're inviting Satan and yeah. all. And I was like, get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Get out of here. And then the guy, the the preacher that was teaching the class, he went to the Christian bookstore inside the church, grabbed the book, and that and then went over, instead of buying the book for me for two dollars, went over to a photocop machine and photocopied the pages for twenty five cents. <laughs> and he was like, Here, read this. I was like, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your cheat codes. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was like, did you, big, did you just steal this uh, from Jesus? Yeah. The baby. high school I went to, Michael, had a record burning. Oh. And that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll bring your yeah. blondie record I was, down. Yeah. I went in there and started grabbing albums out. I'm like, you guys are idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're <loose. laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that ACDC. I'll take it. Uh, Mike Kelton, show. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. What's up, buddy? I, I was watching that uh, new movie, Roadhouse. I know you guys saw it, too. Um, what concerns me is the movie, the, the, the movie is ad free, right? With prime, but they make you watch one commercial before the movie. Do you remember what that commercial was? I do not. It's, it's for a, it's for a movie. It's a movie preview where a bunch of Americans have to evacuate all their cities. And at the end of the clip, an American soldier points his gun at an American citizen and says, well, what kind of American are you? And the movie's name is civil war. Oh yeah. And it yeah. makes 
that that freaked me out a little bit. I gotta be honest. Oh, with we're you. real close to that, sir. Yeah, yeah, I saw the preview for that. It looks good. That looks like a good movie. Yeah, that's not yeah. That. Why why that movie? And if if you and if you're like me, you believe that maybe they use movies for their own predictive programming, propaganda. Yeah, yeah predictive go. programming is the term you're looking for. You so know, you're that not movie. so that we're not completely shocked, right? Uh, like that. Thank you, sir, for the call. Like with that, that movie with Julia Roberts. If you, yeah, yeah, it'd be like if you wanted to cause, like, I don't know, maybe an uprising. You would allow a bunch of illegals in and then let them join the military and not have any Americans in your military. Something like that would be nuts. That would be nuts. Yeah, that'll never happen. I don't worry no. about that stuff. Yeah, you shouldn't. It's out of your control. Eh. But I mean, what are we gonna do? Just gotta enjoy our day. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll be protecting myself. Oh man, they got space lasers, bro. We're done. Um, I can find a space laser. We got, we got no choice. You I just beat up to... a bobcat, and I can find a space laser. We need to buy blue ponchos. Is what we need to do. Light yeah. blue ponchos. Yeah, to hide from the, yeah, to hide oh, from the space lasers. <laughs> All right, uh, I must take a break, and uh, I will let the lines open up for Ask Dom if you got a question. Dizzy, you ever been in trouble? You got any questions for Dom? Uh, Dom actually helped me with my stuff, but Did I was really? hit in a car accident. Yeah. yeah, me too. He helped me with some stuff too. Car accident, late tickets, and I'm going to have to remind him today I need some help because I got jury duty. <laughs> and it happens when we're on the cruise. I got to let them know. Oh, boy. Uh, Ask the John will join us. Ask the John. Hey, John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. My mouth is so dry. Uh oh. <laughs> you want to get your water? Uh, You're dehydrated. dehydrated? Yeah. yeah. But I'm drinking a lot of water. You want me to get you water? Yeah, but not right now. We're in the middle of the air. Oh, like you've, I mean, I would do it for you if you wanted. Joe usually does. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll All do right. it in the break, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You guys going to fight over who gets the water for him? <laughs> I'm getting water. Uh, you just took, uh, was it medication or what is Tylenol. it? Tylenol. Oh, it's just Tylenol? Uh, yeah, but some medications, you know, give you dry mouth. And, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, Have you seen me, myself, and Irene? <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. That's uh, so good. All right, uh, let's take a break. If you want to talk to Dominic Ferriello, get on the phone line, 727-579-1025 or 800-771-1025. If you've got a legal call, a legal question, Ask Dom will be on the air and joining us next on 1025 The Bone. Uh, we have our attorney, Dominic Ferriello, making his way into the studio. If you want to get on the phone line, 727-579-1025 or 800-771-1025. We've only got a couple calls on hold, so there's time to get in, and you can talk to Dom. Is Dom there yet? Uh, I He's not. He's not there. He will be there shortly. That's what he told me. Well, he said two minutes, and that was at 8.54. Okay, well. Now it's 8.58. I'm not mad at you. All right, because it seemed like you were mad at me. I, no, I, you know, but you yeah. said two minutes. Now yeah. it's, it's been four yeah. minutes. Yeah. So do what you do I do? know how to tell time? I Well, I just repeated. I'm just repeating. I'm just Does a messenger. Does Dom know how to tell time? <laughs> I, 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 yes. Unbelievable with law. Cannot read a clock. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the last he told me, he was, uh, he was getting ready to pull in, so... You said two minutes. Correct, yeah. Two. It's been four minutes. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. I feel like I should take the phone call. Finally, I'll, I'll figure help. it out. I see him. Oh, he's get he's sitting down now. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> I see him. I spy. I, I spy. spy yeah. yep. uh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Dom, how are you, buddy? His headphones aren't on yet. Oh, my oh, God. He's getting Take there. He's time. getting there. Take your cruise, time. Cruise, Dom. 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 Sorry, I got uh, I got held up. I ran into Ann Kelly and DJ Ek. You, know, you let them know yeah. I'm, I, they're waiting for me on the and air. I'm, what you, I'm, they're hugging me. They're kissing me. Yeah, you know what they're doing, Dom? Autograph. They're I'm saboteurs. Just, yeah, they're trying to get just, ratings by keeping oh, you out of here. And but, our show is on pause. I know. I'm. I'm. You know. I sign everything. Dom, ask the Dom attorney for Mike Calta. It takes a minute to get all that stuff out. But good morning. Good happy Tuesday. How's everybody? Look, you guys look how nice everybody looks on TV. Look, just mm. just, just gorgeous. More handsome group. <laughs> Are you ready for the cruise? I'm ex I'm ex I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. Uh, I'm looking for. I'm, I told I was talking to Spanish driving in. I'm on a cleanse. I haven't had any alcohol for a couple of weeks. A complete detox. So when I fall off the wagon, I fall right onto the boat. Yeah. And that and it's smooth gonna chest. Be, oh, <laughs> let me tell you something. The water beads, Calvin, <laughs> it just beads and ripples right off. Uh, uh, will look, will, look, will look. you be doing the, uh, the, the, what is it, the cannonball kind of by the belly flop contest? Well, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm down 20, 25 pounds. I, I don't know if I'll have the splash I once had because of my, my sheer volume and mass is smaller. But I mean, I don't know why not. I mean, your booze will probably do it. Dom will probably, he'll, Dom will jump in there and he'll give you. <laughs> He'll give you a show. We're, we're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna look. I always, I always have a blast with you guys and the listeners. 
It's uh, it's really a time where I can just kind of decompress. And remember, what's what's the caveat? What what's the, always the disclaimer? Any advice I give you on the ship in international waters may not be actual, true legal advice in the states. True. That's a disclaimer. So if they say, you know, if, you, if we're in international waters, you say, hey, you know, this officer is in my face, and I go, just slap him. I mean, that may not necessarily be the right advice in the United States, but on the boat. You know, battery on law enforcement officers is different in international waters. Now, I'm not going to say that in the United States, but if I'm intoxicated, there's a disclaimer. So I just got to make sure all that information's out there. Will you go to a, a, a strip club with us in NASA? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, why, why would I not? Well, he, was saying, boozer? he was saying we're getting tattoos. Yeah, nope. yeah, they they don't care what age you are down there. Ten to twenty, you know, booze is gonna get uh, me Spanish booze getting tattoos. We'll go to strip clubs. I mean, you know, boo. I already got a, I already got a, a disguise for him. He's got a little mustache and sideburns. That they're they're not gonna. He's already gonna be in the casino gambling. This is gonna be a fun cruise. And right? they already he already taught him. So if they go, are you boozer? He's gonna go, no, I'm goozer. Oh, <laughs> different, totally different person, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, time to check in with the phone calls. If you want to get in again, 727-579-1025 or the always open 800-771-1025. Let's go to Joe. Joe, good morning. You're on the air with Ask Dom. What do you got, Joe? Hey, good morning. Well, I haven't filed my taxes for about 10, 11 years. Whoops. <laughs> I paid into my taxes. I paid into my taxes this whole time, so they've gotten their money that they would want it, but I just haven't actually done the official filing. Is there... If I start doing that, what kind of penalties am I going to face? What kind of well, well, uh, why? Why would you? So you say you paid in, but you didn't file. So what? Why would you? Why would you even do that? Why would you pay anything? You no, know, we don't do things. We don't always do things that make sense throughout life. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's true. let me let me ask you this because I went through this when I was younger, sir. Did you? Is it kind of like? You didn't do the first year, and then the second year, like, I'm afraid to do it the second year because I didn't do the first year, and then next year. Yeah, pretty much, and then it gets worse and worse and worse, and you're like, you know, what's going to happen now? And the reason is because I tried to do it that I'm not going to owe anything, but they're not going to, you know, so they're not going to be pissed if I don't know. If I'm not, if I'm giving them money still, and maybe that's wrong. So that is is wrong. That is wrong, but, uh, (laughs) Dom, if I can handle this because I went through this myself, and then you tell me if I'm doing okay. Yes. Go ahead. So uh, I would recommend uh, going down to the Social Security office, which I don't know where you live, but there's one right by Raymond James Stadium. You go in there, you okay. tell them you want your uh, W-4 forms for the last 10 years. They'll give them to you. Okay. And then you contact an accountant or a uh, tax attorney, and they have them do them for you. And in many cases, sir, which this is what it was with me, I had missed a couple of years. I, I was still paying into the system by getting a paycheck. But uh, what happens is I, when they did the returns, I actually ended up getting money back. There were some penalties for not paying on time, but there was some money money coming back to me. So you may end up having a, yeah, a windfall cool. that you're not expected. Uh, I went to an attorney named Darren Mish, who is in South Tampa. I, I hope he's still uh, uh, you know doing th- that sort of work. But he gets many people out of uh, huge debts with the IRS, and he's a, he's not a, like a shyster attorney. He's a real good attorney. And uh, he was the one who gave me the advice on what to do. He's like, you don't really need me. You need the Social Security office and you need an accountant. But he's a guy where if you get in trouble tax-wise, I would have him call. Now, how would I do, Dom? Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, my advice to this guy was to get on the cruise with us and just don't come back from Bahamas and stay there. So, I mean, Nick. That sounds okay. My kids might be pissed, but. Mike's alleged legal advice is is actually uh, worse than mine. Mine is just get on the boat, don't come back from the Bahamas. But uh, in in actuality, if you email me at Asadom, I can get you in touch with a accountant, a CPA. Mike's correct. You got to get the forms because if you're going to go back and and catch up, you're going to need all that information accurately. You're also going to need to have the itemized list of the amount of money that you paid to the government, uh, and then that's going to have to coincide with the filings and the, and the the forms there, and all that can be helped with an accountant. Now, if it gets nasty. If you file it and then it becomes a problem or your red flag or they're going to audit you, then it's going to be time for a tax attorney. We have one in network Yay. as well. So that's you know, yeah. do you need one immediately? No. But you might need one down the road when you when you play the catch up game. But just go to asadom.com. Darren Collado, by the way, is my accountant. He's been on the show. He usually comes on around tax season, but because of the cruise, I've I've kind of pushed some things off with that. All right. Well, I hope that helps you out, sir. Yeah, what was the what was the email again? 
askthedom.com is my website and my personal email is my first name, Dominic at askthedom.com. But you go to either one, my personal okay. email or the website, it'll get to me. Thanks a lot. All right, buddy. Good luck to you. Go. Let's right. go to uh, Pauline. Pauline, good morning. I want to ask the Dom. What do you got? Hi, Mike. Um, love the show. Um, Thank you. Just wanted to ask on the 12th, a couple of weeks ago, I was hit by a car going, well, between 80 and 100 miles an hour, and it hit my front side in front of my passenger door, and it ripped off the bumper, and of course it bent the axle, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, now the car is totaled, which is just great, because now we're probably, obviously, have to buy something else to have a car payment. I don't, we have really good insurance, however, I guess my question is, is there any other thing I should be doing besides just using my own car insurance? Well, the are car you, drove away. Are you injured? Not any more than I was before. I have spondylosis, and I'm getting ready to have spine surgery in two weeks. Oh, I work. went by ambulance. Oh. Was that so, was that surgery related to the accident? No. All right. Well, did it did no. did the injuries exacerbate? Were the injuries worse as a result of the your pre existing injuries? Were they made worse or exacerbated because of the accident, or do you not know? I I don't know, yeah. and I need to go back to see Dr. Duke because he's the one, his name is, well, New Spine, yeah. and, um, and have him look at the CT scan that they did when I went to the hospital. Well, that and the MRI. Um, They'll probably need to look at both of those. Yeah. Now, do you have uninsured yeah. motorist coverage? Yes. All right. How much coverage do you have? Um, oh gosh, now that you're asking, that's, I'm not that's, sure. That's a, well, a lot of people don't know if they have it. So you at least got through the first question that you have it. And then, then the next question is how much coverage. So how much bodily right. injury coverage do you have? I think like, is that PIP? Nope. That PIP is personal injury protection coverage. That's man. Everybody has okay. that BI and UM is elected. You don't, you don't have to have that by the state of Florida. You would have to have purchased that in addition and added on to your policy. But usually the BI and the UM match. So if you don't know the UM, then if you do know the BI, then usually they match. But if not, okay. you, you, if you want to contact the office later today and you'll, you'll think about retaining the services of my firm for a personal injury claim, you're going to have to use your own insurance because the other vehicle left. There's no at-fault party if they took off, right. so you're stuck with your auto insurance or your private health insurance for medical purposes, which would be above and beyond yeah. the PIP, the personal injury protection coverage in Florida is a no fault gotcha. insurance state. And then your UM claim, your own property damage claims. So you're going to be making several claims potentially under your own policy, but that's why you purchased insurance. People say, I don't want to use my own policy. Well, then you're wasting the money every month buying insurance. Don't be afraid to use right. your own policy. Okay. Right. Yeah, because obviously it was determined that I was not at fault, and there was someone else that called in a witness and was called in the vehicle that was, I guess, a couple miles back that was driving erratically. So I'm like, great, now I have to get a new vehicle, and we can't afford it. You know, it's just I just didn't know if I needed to do anything else. Call so, me. That's thank what you, you got to do. You call or email me. That's your next step, and then we'll walk through it. And if you you need me, great. If you don't. Great. Either way, I'll tell you when we have a little bit more time off air. Okay. Thank you, Dom. Yes, ma'am. Right, you're welcome. Thank guys. you. Uh, let me go through these. Good morning. I want to ask Dom, who's this? Uh, yeah, my name is Mark. What do you um, got, Mark? My, my question is actually to both of you, only because I think Mike has some experience as well. So I run a, a free pet food roadside pantry. It's a little wooden box, two square feet. sits in my front yard. I fill it full of cat and dog food and provide it to people in need, people that have fallen on hard times just to try to prevent people from having to surrender their pets and or overcrowd the, the shelters. Anyway, the purpose of my question is, in two years, which is how long I've been operating it, um, we have provided 33 tons of food wow. to a box that's two square feet, um, dry food and canned food. Uh, and I'm wondering if there's any value or if I need to do anything in the form of a 501c3. Now, let me be clear. We don't accept money. We never have accepted money. We never do accept money. All we accept is if people want to leave a donation, you know, donate pet food and drop it on our front porch, and then we repackage it, put it in the box. I'm trying to determine if I need to file as a 501c3 
for any reason, protection or otherwise. Well, I think it would be a good idea in the sense that you can also you know, recover your, your losses in the sense of the cost of buying the pet food and supplying the, uh, you know, that for folks that come by. And then if you, you get donations and you want to calculate that, then that just goes back into the costs. You, know, the, you, you might have, I don't want to say some tax benefits or credits there in the sense that because you're spending, how much are you spending per month? To do this venture, well, well, in, uh, I have never really figured it out, but I will say that right now we're operating at about seventy-five percent donations and twenty-five percent that we purchase ourselves. Yeah, so you, you probably want to do that, set something up because you are you are processing money, and I don't know what the value of the seventy-five percent is. I mean, if it's, I mean, I don't know if you if you're making a thousand dollars. If it's to cost you a thousand dollars a month, you know, then seven hundred and fifty of that is in donations and using that math, you know, and then you multiply that by by twelve months under that example, you know, yeah, you pro- you probably need to account for the management of that money. I mean, someone can come and say, well, they're not using it for over all of the pet food. They're yeah. they're, use, they're using it to you well, know, put gas that's in my, their cars. They're using it. Yeah, for, but know, that's. But my point is, we're not using money. Nobody gives us money. When I say donations, we don't accept money from anybody. We only accept food donations. So when you okay, so when you say seventy five percent of the cost, it's, it's, someone's giving you the food, and you're just repackaging it. You're not taking a dollar from Correct. somebody, is what? Oh, that's what. Correct. Oh, that's interesting enough. Now you have to monetize the amount of food that you're getting, and I, you know, you would have to do that. That's. This is an interesting scenario. Um, well, no good deed goes unpunished because now you got to figure yeah. out a way that somebody out there doesn't get aggravated or wants to investigate that you're not doing it the right way. Um, yeah, I I think uh, setting up a company would probably be the smartest way to do it just to protect you. And then you still have 25% in costs that the family's paying per month that you're not, you know, that you can write off as a donation under your taxes. I mean that if that's yeah, legit, it's legit. Me, well, but I'm not inter- interested in trying to recoup that cost. This was something that I did to honor a pet of mine who passed away, and to kind of carry on his memory. Blah blah blah. But I'm not interested in trying to recoup costs. What I'm interested in is whether there's something I need to do legally to protect myself or my family, or two, is there anything I need to do from a tax purpose that would require me to do it a 501c3? Again, knowing that we we take no monetary donations. All of that is interrelated. All of it's interrelated. You're going to get a tax benefit at the same time, going to protect your family, because if something happens, if someone eats the, the, well, let's say if the dog eats the food and the dog gets sick, what do you think is going to happen in this litigious society? Well, and that's the... and I'm going to go after the guy that gave me the food for free, which is the irony in all of this. And don't don't think that that can't happen. Well, and I was kind of thinking under the same lines as if somebody falls over and you try to give them CPR and they die. And, you know, you say, well, I was, you know, goodwill. I was trying to help this person. You're not held liable. I was looking at it under that. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, that's I I had took a, uh, several CPR courses. I just was recertified when I'm because I'm coaching at Bayshore Little League, and that was one of the topics that came up uh, was was those type of cases. But the problem with that is when you have folks that come in that aren't qualified, they're not trained, they don't know what the hell they're doing, and they might cause more harm than good. Now they don't know any better. I mean, they're they're trying to be good Samaritans, but they do it in a bad way. Is 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 the concept of that law? Uh, which again, I don't. I still. Don't, I mean, you can be charged. I don't. I don't know if a jury's going to convict on that because at the end of the day, this individual's trying to do a good thing. They just weren't properly trained in that hypothetical or that scenario. Uh, email me. Let's 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 cover the bases correctly here with the forming a company, and uh, it's uh, it's a good thing that you're asking me now and not on the ship in international waters because in international waters, drunk Tom would say, "Just keep doing what you're doing until you're sued." And uh, so you want to get the advice here in the states while I'm uh, on the show. Yep, I appreciate your time. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank All you, right. sir. Uh, good morning. Who's this? Hello. Hello, this is Sean. Hi, Sean. You're on Acid Dom. What do you got? Okay, so I have a question. 
um, concerning getting the gun rights back. What'd you do? I need to know the background. What'd you do and how long ago? Um, this was in 1990 um, when I was 18 years old and received, it was a receiving stolen property. All right. Not a big deal. And what do you want um, now? Um, I just want to know, it was supposed to be expunged, and when I went recently to acquire a firearm, I got a call from a detective, and he had said, hey, this is easy to take care of, contact an attorney. So I thought about calling Dom. Yeah. So do you remember if you were adjudicated guilty? Uh, probably not if you were seeking to have it expunged. It was it was a no contest. Well, no contest is the type of plea, so you're not contesting the charges. Now, the, the question yeah. would have been, was it a withhold of adjudication versus a I have conviction? That, that's I don't question. know. Okay, well, that's what you'll find My, out. What were you called? The would I, okay, perfect. Call the Can you handle this in another state? Well, where was where was the, the initial charges in 1990? Was in a different state, not Florida? Yes, correct. It was up in Michigan. Well, Do I need to contact somebody there? Yeah, Pam, you know, my my private investigator, that's a question for her. She might be able to look up the information in Michigan as far as your, your background. Or if you have a copy of your disposition of the charges for Michigan, we can look at it. And if you're not a convicted felon, you know, then more likely than not, you should be able to work out a resolution in that state. But no, I'm not licensed in Michigan. And yes, you will need an attorney there that does a restoration of civil rights if your rights were taken from you, or if they're going to do what's which, called a sealment or expungement, which is what we call it in the state of Florida. Correct. It was supposed to be expunged, um, and the detective that I spoke with, we had a great meeting. He was very kind, and he said, this is simple. You just need to contact an attorney and have them fully remove it from your record. Where was the detective that told you this? What state? P Pinellas County. All right. Well, as much as we love the folks in Pinellas County, it may not be that simple because you're dealing with a state in Michigan. So gotcha. you, you can call Pam, ask her if she can research it, or if you have the information, you can send it over. We can look at it. But the true answer is you need to contact a lawyer in Michigan that knows the laws of that state. Where I'm not licensed there. Very good. Thank you. All right, buddy. Good luck you're to welcome. you. Thank you. Oh, Lowy Radio. Oh, Lowy Radio. That's you. That's you. Ethan, hello? Yeah, Lowy Radio, sir. You're on Ask the Dumb. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, say yeah. oh. can you see <laughs> by the dawn's early light what so Is this I figured it out. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was fantastic. I mean, we're quite the singers. All right, now that is the last fantastic. call. Good morning, I want to ask the Dom. What is your name? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm uh, this is uh, Alan. Hi, Alan. You're on with the Dom. What do you County. got? Huh? All right, what do you got, buddy? <laughs> oh, I got a. Uh, I bought some pro a couple pieces of property, two pair of cells together, in a package deal. And one side of it, six people are, you know, six people's names are on the property. And two have not signed yet. And I already, it's been about eight months now, and I want to sell it. And I can't, there's like two people on the six, you know. They haven't signed yet. So well, when, you, when you bought when you bought this property uh, eight months ago, did you go through a closing process? Did you use a lawyer or title uh, company? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, what I did, I found I found the property on uh, Zillow, and then they they put you into a real estate company, and then that real estate company used a title company in, um over in uh, Winterhaven. Okay. So the yeah, title, so. have you talked to the title agent that says, hey, at the closing, all of the buyers, all of the sellers, whoever's named on these parcels that you bought that are adjacent to each other, have got to execute 
the proper closing documents so then you can transfer ownership and title of the property. And then that has to be registered with the county, obviously, for tax purposes and property taxes and all of that. So right, if right, right. call the title company and find out if that was done, you should have received all the paperwork shortly after the closing, if not day of. Yes, and I did. And uh, one of them's in my name. The other one's still with the six people on it. Or they, there's two that are not signing. So, well, then that's not. I don't. Not, I don't or, that's not clear title. Then, if two owners right, haven't, right, right. haven't signed, I don't. That, gotcha. You know, that's going to be. Well, then you're going to have now a claim against potentially the title company uh, if they didn't oh, execute okay. clear title. So, what you need now is uh, Christina Lund, who is our real estate law property rights attorney in the okay. network. Just email me at acidom.com. Christina represented me. I sold some real estate property a few months ago, some rental property. Uh, so she's actually represented me. She's fantastic. Email me. Um, oh, wow. Ask okay. the dom. Put a squib in as to what's going on. If you have any documents, Squibbit. attach an email. And uh, I'll send it over to, uh, to Christina. There you go. Perfect. Because, yeah, I didn't know who to go after, the real estate company or the... All of the above. So, You're uh, Probably everybody. All right. Good luck to you, sir. Okay. Thanks Thank a lot, you. man. You're I got welcome. one more. Let's see if this is the same guy or probably might be Medicine Man. Morning, show, Hello. Hi. Good morning, guys. Uh, it's Stephanie. How are you? Good hot voice, Stephanie. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Thank you. I have a question for Dom. Um, Dom, I know that you probably won't be able to help me, but I was wondering if you had um, somebody that you know in the state of Georgia that I should contact. Um, my situation is this. I've lived at this apartment complex for almost three years, and in December, my upstairs neighbor's water heater failed and um, flooded my apartment. And the apartment complex refused to put me up in another apartment unless I signed a brand new lease. They refused to pay to put me up somewhere while there was two inches of standing water in my apartment. Um, so I know that basically in the state of Georgia, tenants really have no rights. But I would like to talk to somebody to see if there's anything I can pursue because I did um, have to inconvenience somebody by staying with them. And this happened right around Christmas time. So, I mean, it was, like I said, really an inconvenience for them. But I'm very grateful that they were able to do that. All right, here's the answer. Um, also, are you, are you ready? Oh, sorry, go ahead. You ready? Here's yeah. the answer. All right, so do you know the county in Georgia where this occurred? Yeah, it's Chatham County, it's right. Savannah. So, good. All right, so you're going to contact the, the county's local bar association. Predominantly every county okay. has a bar association. I'm a member of the Hillsborough Bar, Pinellas, Pasco, et cetera. So you contact the bar association in that county in Georgia, and you ask them for the lawyer referral service there. Each county has lawyer. lawyers that are members, and then they're part of a referral service predominantly. And then in the referral service, say, I need a landlord-tenant lawyer. And then they're going to either give you the next name that comes up on the list, or they might give you two or three to call and to talk to in that state, in that county. And that's what okay. I would do. If I'm in a different county, if I'm in a different state and I don't know anybody there, I would contact the local bar, ask the referral service for a lawyer in their network that does this area of law, and then I would contact that individual through their referral source in that state. And that's what I would do if I was in your shoes. I'm going to give you the same advice I'd give myself in my own head. And then that way, you know, you can run, run with it with what they tell you or who they recommend. That's the answer for yeah. you and everybody listening for issues outside of the state of Florida because I'm only only licensed in this state. I really appreciate that because I tried to call a couple of um, law firms on my own and all of them have pretty much told me that, yeah, um, Georgia really doesn't care about their uh, renters. And um, you probably won't have much of a case. But the other thing that I do want to talk to them about is that there are two stairs that have been broken that go up from the first floor where I live to the second floor, broken so much as you can see the rebar. And they've been told by the 
Chatham County to fix it, and they still haven't fixed it. Mm. Someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, the Bar Association has got lawyers that are in that network, and and they're not going to blow you off in the sense because they're in the network. They want to stay in the network. They want to have good, positive feedback. Lawyers don't want to be complained about through their you know bar association that they're members of. You know, so they'll mm-hmm. they'll probably be very attentive to now it doesn't mean they're gonna take the case, but they'll probably be right. very attentive to you in addressing your issues and concerns and telling you if you've got a case or not. That's what I'd recommend. You know, hang up with us now and go ahead and call the local bar association there and you can find their, their information probably at a website. Uh, I almost said yellow pages. That, that's how old I am. I, I literally caught myself. It's, oh, just look it up in the yellow pages. And people are like, I remember those days. How old am and I, thank Carmen? You. Jesus, man. You're not old. Oh, my God. The yellow pages thank- ridiculous. The yellow pages are what Disney and Spanish you- stand on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's my cushion. Thank you so much, Dom, for helping me in a previous uh, car accident. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, it, uh, my pleasure. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for listening and, and the show and supporting the station and Mike Shav- and We We, we appreciate Appreciate you more than you realize. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys all have a good day. You Bye, too, buddy. Carmen. Love you. you. Too. Thank you, uh, Dom. And finally, in closing, yes, I would mentioned this to you on a previous show, mm. and uh, this week I'm supposed to report for jury duty, but it's the day that we're leaving for the cruise. Did you mm-hmm. not contact them? Yeah, I did not. That's why I'm bringing <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> right. oh, you. Got, you got it right. <laughs> my God, I love you to death. All right, can you email me or just send me the jury summons, and then I will take care of it. All right, thank you. Right. Said, oh, and by the way, uh, my show is tonight because the Lightning is, is, are playing tomorrow uh, broadcast here on the station, as you know. So tonight is the Asadam show. It's just going to be me to pick up right where we left off this morning, tackling some more calls and questions. But uh, no Acidom tomorrow. It will be tonight because of the lightning. What uh, what time and anybody special on it? Is you blowing through calls? It's, it's just me blowing through calls. It's the same time. It's, so it's going to be eight o'clock to ten. But uh, and then ironically enough, we've got the same situation next week. So you got back to back Wednesdays. The lightning are playing. So the next two weeks they've shifted me till uh, to Tuesday. So and the next week I've got a charity in. Uh, the uh, that local duck race where they put all the ducks in the water and then they they run down the um, they, it's for the Kiwanis Club yeah and, they, and it goes down the river it's a it's a fun great event those great folks are coming in they've been on the show before they're coming in next Tuesday but today it's just me kind of picking up where we left off this morning so two Tuesdays I've asked the Dom and then next Thursday I'm with you on the boat maybe there might be a switch up maybe Tuesdays are the day for you oh. Uh, well, and I think I I, I want to. Say, I might be wrong. It might be one more, but I think that might be the last conflict that my show has with the lightning broadcast. So it, it's just there's maybe about seven or eight in the season uh, because of the programming with when they play. But this right. might next week may be the last one. There might be one more in April. Other than that, then there's really no other conflicts on Wednesday. But you know whatever. Whatever works best. I, I I think the station with the programming, because remember they squeeze me in. I lop off one ha- one hour of Cat Named Mo and one hour of Johnny B. So they kind of bracket me in between those guys. So it kind of makes sense that Wednesday's kind of the midday to do it. Yeah. I, I don't know because of those shows if they would move me to a Tuesday or Thursday. But I'm very happy and content where I am. And I don't want to mess up cat or johnny you know or the or the station program. they're already falling apart as it is <laughs> you know I, i'm the glue mike mm. on wednesday that holds those shows together you and, and i will. tell i tell them that all of the time yeah i hear you that's what i feel about dizzy <laughs> uh dom thank you for helping out our listeners we will see you next week uh next tuesday and then we'll see you or i'm sorry next wednesday and then of course on the cruise next thursday if you didn't get through 813-251-5550 we're asked to dom.com dom have a great day and remember, if you do get legal advice on the ship, I'm joking. Even if I'm intoxicated, I will try to give you the best legal <laughs> advice possible. Right, Carmen? A little yes. bit. Galvin, give this disclaimer there. Galvin, spit out the disclaimer. The right, ducks Galvin. are in a row. <laughs> yep, hey. North to All south. Right. I love you guys. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you, Don. We'll take a quick break. It's the Mike Calton Show. This is 102.5 The Bone. Uh, Mike Calton Show, though. Hey, what's up? It's, Med- it's Medicine Man. I knew. I knew it was you. How you doing? Okay, yeah, I'm recuperating for a couple of concerts. It was back to back nights. Uh, last night at Ruth Eckett Hall, Joe Sacci, Joe Sacciani, and Steve Vai. Which one was better? Oh, uh, that one! It was awesome. No, I ran into Steve. Which one was better, Vai or, or Satriani? 
Oh, they're both of you as good as each other. There was a guitar extravaganza last night. It was oh, spectacular. Mm. Good. And what's the other show you went to? The, uh, the night before, Janice Wild, Ministry, uh, Gary Newman, and uh, Frontline Assembly. That was a pretty cool show, too. Yeah. Now, how did you get there, Medicine Man? How'd you get all the way to Janice Live from Newport Ritchie? Oh, and my friend, um, uh, Chris. Which one is Chris? Is he the one with the fat wife? Chris is it. No, it's a different guy. He's a heavyset guy with a girlfriend. Oh, fat guy with a girlfriend? Italian dude. Yeah, he has a girlfriend. He looks like um, the brother of the guy that owns great, uh, I mean, Good Greeks uh, movie company. Okay. I don't know what that guy looks <laughs> he's, like. He's, he's, he's kind of Sicilian, you know? Well, he, that guy's Greek, yeah. 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 Hmm. But he looks Greek. Italians look much alike. Okay, let's not get crazy now. Yeah, but it was a great event for both nights at Janice and, of course, Ruth, they could all last night. Well, I'm glad you had a great, a great time. To, okay. I, I ran to Ronnie G last night, too. Yeah, where was he? What was that at? Was that Steve I? He has the Steve Guy concert. He was playing on an outdoor stage along with uh, Steve Shot and somebody else. I forget who it was. I had a good time last night. Well, I'm glad, Medicine Man. It's always good to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was an epic show last night, both places. Yep, we heard. I already said that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. That was awesome. Okay. So, any more concerts I go to, I'll let you guys know what please, how they please. are, you know? Sometimes we don't hear from you for a couple of days, and we yeah. go, well, what concerts are you going to? I know. Hey, you seen any good that movies? Great... Seen any good movies lately? Oh, yeah. The most recent movie I've seen was Ghostbusters. It was pretty good. All right. Have you seen The Ducks? The Frozen Empire. I'm looking forward for uh, Godzilla teaming up with King Kong. I know. Godzilla X yeah, Kong. I me go. too. This oh, sorry, Medicine Man. I love you. I can only go so long. <laughs> Bye, Alex. Bust me to blow my head. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dizzy, are you ready for this cruise? I don't feel like you are. I'm excited for this cruise. You have no idea how excited Dizzy is. Dizzy is probably the most ready for the cruise out of all of us. Who? You know, there's a lot of people from the station going. Yeah. Like who? Like salespeople, uh, I think. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think so. I know Scotty's <laughs> going. Sonia's going. Scotty. In sales. Oh, Scotty, okay. yeah, yeah, nah. oh. no, no, not, not open, open mouth, mouth. Yeah, Got I love, snap I love his neck by day three. Mike goes. Uh, there's a lot of people going. Like who? I don't know. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> going. <laughs> Just throwing stuff no, no, out there. Like, like uh, I know uh, Sonia's going from sales, and then she brings Danielle, who used to work in promotions. Okay, I think she's yeah. going. And Scotty uh, from sales is going. So I, I uh, Olivero's going. John Brennan's going. Like, there is quite the, the group from the station going, yeah. which is good. And then the hundreds and hundreds of yeah. the listeners that are going. Steve Burns going. And I'm mm -hmm. getting yeah. excited now that it's just a little And all the people on spring away. break that are also going to be on the boat. Ooh, I forgot gonna about be that. So that, nice. I, mean, I have a question. Yeah. Is it true that someone tried to put you in a headlock one time on the cruise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it you was thought that would be funny? Wild. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, so blew my mind when I heard that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. it blew all of our they minds. They just thought this would be funny. Bro. Out of all the people, let me put Galvin. Like, kind of yeah. one of those, hey, guy, you got to yeah. get you in a headlock. There's no headlock. good headlock. <laughs> in, <laughs> in that guy's defense, he did walk up to Joe Gio and I before and said, Galvin likes hugs, right? And we all went, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, especially from I, the back. Yeah, and surprised. then I yelled at him like he was a <laughs> five-year-old kid. No, that that wasn't the best oh, no. part. The best part is when you <laughs> squeezed his arm yeah. and his face went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he did the tippy toes. Yeah. 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 I squeezed his arm and, I love, <laughs> and yelled at him like a five-year-old kid. Yep. And he apologized like 19 times. <sighs> and every time he would go past me, he'd go, I go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the crow tried to fight Joe. That's oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That was, uh, what, what are we doing? The magic it? man. Uh, no, not no, Alice Creeper. Uh, Creeper. Alice, Alice, Creeper. Alice Creeper, yeah. Alice Creeper. <laughs> they're nice people, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're nice. I'm, I'm past that now. Yeah. Like, if I saw them again in uh, in Sarasota, I would, like, last time I saw them, the guy went to shake my hand. I go, don't touch me. <laughs> you tried to fight Pap up on the cruise. I wanted to smack him. Yeah. And, uh, and, but now if I saw them, I'd be like, yeah. all right, it's all. Water Unfortunately, that was mostly my fault. Joe took unnecessary shrapnel from. I know, yeah, but, but still, yeah, you don't you don't take it out on other people. I know, I know. I yeah, that was a wild night. It's all right, I forgive you. Thanks. You're Thank you. See, you I'm go. not a magic man. You I can know. fight me if you wanted. To. No, I don't want to fight you. <laughs> I don't want to fight you. Either. I'd rather forgive you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm very excited. The more I think about it, I don't have. Yeah. I have uh, Pete going. Yeah, but nobody else. Like, no, my wife's not going. Mm. Paulie D's not going. Okay. Uh, Joey's not going. So. Joey's not going. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm really excited because I think I'm going to be picking up a new roommate. So I'm pretty stoked. What do you mean? I think Dizzy's going to come room with me. Why? Yeah. Why not? 
The oh. boys, gruesome yeah. twosome. Oh, oh, oh! So, so you're gonna leave Tom? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Hey, oh, Dizzy. <laughs> Dizzy's taking over your spot, Joe. You're no longer the gruesome oh. twosome. Oh, oh, oh burn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, thing. That's right. that. Look, they <laughs> got a thing. Dude, yeah. Look at it, do that again. Yeah, look at yeah. the thing. Some stupid, stupid <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not you. You're not involved yeah. in that, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Get your that's own right. thing. I don't want to be involved yeah. in that. You do. Whatever. You kind of do. do. Yeah, you have to the look. Right, yeah. You know who your long term partner is, Joe. I do, Michael. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. I got you for life. Oh, you? Yep. I thought you meant sugar pants. My bad. I thought Me and Pete. Yeah. I and Pete, Pete have known Joe for 20 years. That's oh, right. okay. It's was Dizzy who longer. you were talking about when you said your heart belongs to another? <laughs> <laughs> oh, life. <laughs> oh, life. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Carmen, are you excited? You're very uh, quiet these past couple of days. I'm very excited. It's going to be fun. Can I ask you a question now? That Kind of the same question I asked you in the beginning of the show. Sure. Who do you hate? Like, why are you so angry right now? I'm not angry. Why are you so, like, quiet? I'm not. I just, you guys are talking. I'm not going to interrupt. So. Yeah, but it's di- it's different. There's something going on. You seem very glum. No, I'm fine. I'm good. No. <gasps> okay. Is don't, it because don't you're, do getting, it. you're getting older? Oh. Oh. You knew no. you were going to do it. Everybody, everybody knows? No. Not everybody. What tomorrow is? I, of course, know. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's Carmen. Spanish just found it's out. <laughs> Listen, I've had a long week or so, man. Mm. I already got a gift for you. Yeah. Thank you. You know what I'm getting you. Yes. I already gave you mine. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Galvin. It's a good thing I got the gift because I'm the only one out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Galvin's gift was great. Mm-hmm. Hey, also, let me know, Carmen, if you want to come do that float tank with me, that sensory deprivation float oh, tank. Okay. I got it. Yeah, I have an extra one. You offered me that. I have plenty of extra oh, ones, okay. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean extra How many do you have? Yeah, I, I actually have a <laughs> bunch. A yeah, yeah. I, I have a, I have a bunch extra. So if you want to do it, just let me know. I'll, I'll okay. make an appointment. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to go with me either if you don't want to. If you just okay, want to go by yourself. You. Yeah, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Please. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. For you, anything. You want to see me in the depri- deprivation tank? Because yeah. I did it. Yeah, you would love it. No, I, this I is think me. you would really like it. This is me. Then I go. Wonder if they can see my wiener. <laughs> oh, uh, no, there are no well, cameras they, in there. Yeah, they say that. Yeah. Well, say whatever. That. Yeah. Chuck Berry used to say that too. Yeah, it, it's a it's a very interesting experience. You would like it. Listen, they they lay in the tank mm-hmm. and you float, right? And uh, and I go, what's the point? I don't get any of it. And then they say you're cleansing your thoughts. And oh yeah. I started thinking of stuff that I haven't thought about in years. It was uh, weird, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Because it's like full of salt, right? That's yeah, it burns your eyes. It burns your eyes. Yeah, you don't want to oh, get really? it. And they give you a little petroleum jelly. So like, if you have any cuts or anything, you put it on that before you get in, Oof. so you're not burning it up. But yeah, it's a it's a blast. I love it. I I don't think I'll ever stop going. I do it once a week. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and on that note. On that note, we're done. <laughs> 